Stay tuned for a special presentation after the movie. And now, our feature presentation. What kind of cereal do you want? I don't care. Cornflakes? All right. Want fruit on it? Yeah. We don't have any. That's why Post invented cornflakes and freeze-dried strawberries, peaches, and blueberries. Cereal with fruit. Every time. A better breakfast. Some mothers have it, some don't. And oh, those that do. The Post Real Fruit in the Box cereals. Make breakfast a little bit better. Here's Bo, the brave Whirlybird pilot, looking for a place to land. Say, there's one now. Lower the ladder! And what a wonderful place to drop in on. Elsie's Ice Cream Land. There's Elsie, who says, Come on, everyone. March right up and take your pick. Morton, Morton, very big on flavor. Very big on goodness, too. Very big on pleasing. the dreamiest, creamiest ice cream you ever tasted. Nobody knows how to make ice cream better than Borden's. Elsie says, ask your mom to get the very big half-gallon size so you won't run out. So I Borden's, Borden's, very big flavor. When a dog comes home with dirty paws, his best friend is Mr. Clean, the all-time champ of all kinds of cleaning. Procter & Gamble's new all-purpose liquid cleaner. On wash day, soap dirty, grimy paw prints with Mr. Clean. They just disappear, because he helps laundry suds do cleaner, fresher smelling wash. Grimy paw prints on painted doors, no trouble at all for Mr. Clean himself. He cleans anything washable, faster and easier. This means I'm hungry. It also means dirty dirt. But Mr. Clean just wipes it away, nothing to it. Why, he'll even clean the dog himself. No wonder dogs love Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean gets rid of dirt and grime and grease in just a minute. Mr. Clean will clean your whole house and everything that's in it. Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean. You know, uh, everyone knows the importance of taking a break every once in a while when you're working. Well, the same thing holds true if you're having fun. Now, that's why plays have intermissions. And during the intermission, you'll find the nearby fountain where they serve Coca-Cola is a mighty popular place. A sparkling glass of ice-cold Coke is a sparkling addition to the festivity and the excitement of opening night. Coke has a bright flavor. A distinctive flavor, all its own, that has never been equaled. It's bracing, too. Coca-Cola gives you a bit of quick energy that brings you back so refreshed, so quickly, and with as few calories as half an average juicy grapefruit. So at intermission time, or any time, pause and refresh. 
Stop at the fountain where Coke is served. Then you can relax with the most asked for soft drink in the whole world, bright and bracing Coca-Cola. Give yourself a break. Have a Coke. <laughs> We now bring you the top stories from around the nation at the top of the hour here on TV2 and WLOL. Brought to you today by the Eden Corporation. Building a better tomorrow, today. Around one hour ago, word came over the wire that there has been an enemy attack against a forward operating base controlled by the United States military on the border of Serbia. Inside sources state that as many as 300 military personnel have been killed. The House of National Assembly issued a statement around 25 minutes ago saying that this is not of their doing, and that it has nothing to do with the nation's supposed liberation of Greece, which leaders of the free world have called an unprecedented act of needless aggression. At this time, the United States government has not made an official statement on this matter, but it can be assumed that one is coming later in the morning. And in sporting news, the Milwaukee Braves faced the Washington Senators in an exhibition game last night in Milwaukee and have blown the Senators out in the regulatory nine innings, with a final score of Milwaukee 14 to Washington 0. This is the 10th straight victory for the Milwaukee Braves, and the final game in the series will take place this evening in Milwaukee. And of course, you can catch the game right here on Minnesota's Voice of Baseball, 99.5 WLOL and TV2. Coverage will begin from the TV2 Sports Broadcasting Team at 6 p.m. local time. And finally, in the community highlight for today, we have a story that is going to warm your heart a little bit. Around 1 a.m. local time this morning, a fire rocked the suburbs of Minneapolis. While the damage has been reported to be quite severe, with entire apartment complexes being completely and utterly destroyed, there is a silver lining to the story. 14-year-old Minneapolis resident Maxwell Jacob Friedman was seen helping his fellow neighbors to ensure that everyone was evacuated from their homes safely and swiftly, even managing to save a family of kittens a neighbor reported had been born just hours before the fire. Maxwell, if you're hearing this, keep up the great work. The work of, dare I say, a hero in the making. But enough news. Let's get you back to your morning music. You're at the top of the hour on 99.5 WLOL and TV2. This one is a new tune called One-Eyed, One-Horned, Flying Purple People Eater. We'll be back shortly with more morning news for you all. This is TV2, Minneapolis. Well, I saw the thing coming out of the sky. It had a one long horn and one big eye. I commenced to shake him and I said, Ooh, it looks like a purple people leader to me. It was a one eyed, one horn, flying purple people leader. A one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people leader Sure looks strange to me Oh, well, he came down to earth and he lit in a tree I said, Mr. Purple People Leader, don't eat me I heard him say in a voice so gruff I wouldn't eat you cause you're so tough It was a one-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people leader One-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people leader One-eyed, one-horned, flying purple people leader Sure looks strange to me I said, Mr. Purple People Leader, what's your line? He said, I eat purple people and it sure is fine. But that's not the reason that I came to land. I wanna get a job in a rock and roll band. Well, bless my soul, rock and roll, flying purple people leader. Pigeon toad on the cold, flying purple people leader. Friendly little people leader, what a sight to see. And then it swung from the tree and it laid on the ground. And it started to rock, oh really, rocking around. It was a crazy ditty with a swing and tune. Sing a pop, tap, a poop, a lap, a loom, bam, boom. Well, bless my soul, rock and roll, flying purple people leader. Big and good and the gold, flying purple people leader. I like short shots. Flying purple people leader. What a sight to see. Well, he went on his way, and then what do you know? 
saw him last night on a TV show. He wasn't blowing it out or really knocking them dead. Playing rock and roll music through the horn in his head. Where does it all start? Sometimes here with an acid stomach or here with tense upset digestive nerves. It may even reach here with that fuzzy achy feeling in the head. Soon you seem to feel sick all over. It's the acid tension pain trouble triangle. Now there's a new medication, liquid peptans, specially developed to break the trouble triangle. Peptans comes in fast acting liquid form, no waiting to dissolve. Peptan settles acid stomach with an ingredient that neutralizes excess acid, a cause of your trouble. Peptan calms digestive nerves with tension-soothing ingredients that help stop stomach spasms and cramps. Peptan has a gentle, fast-acting ingredient that helps relieve the achy head that's part of your distressed feeling. Peptan breaks the trouble triangle to help stop your sick all over feeling. Break the acid tension pain trouble triangle. Get new liquid Peptan U-Ban, deep, dark, delicious, luxury in a cup. If there's one place I want a little luxury, it's in my coffee. So I pay a bit more for U-Ban. U-Ban, deep, dark, delicious, luxury in a cup. U-Ban coffee. See how craftsmanship makes the big difference in the low price field. See Studebaker 57 now. Time now for our regular chit chat with one of the nation's leading disc jockeys. And here he is looking more like a college professor, which, oh, by the way, he is than the spin boy, or he was rather than the spin boy he is. Erwin Johnson from WBNS, the Columbia affiliate in Columbus, Ohio. Erwin! And how are you, Patty? So you have a great show going here. Oh, well, thank you, Irvin, but I want to know about you. Have you really been doing your same show for how many years is it? Well, yes, I've been the early worm for about as many years as you are old, Patty. Seventeen. Oh, that's sweet talk, Irvin. 7,621 broadcasts. And before you have a chance to ask me the question, let me say no, you never get used to getting up that early. I bet you don't. One more thing. You really were a college professor, right? Oui, naturellement. Uh, I taught French for about nine years at Ohio State. Mm, and you could do a commercial in French, no? Mm, mais oui, Patty. Take these cakes, for example. Beautiful, smooth, fluffy, light frosting. Beau, doux, écumeux, glacé léger. Like the fancy homemade cooked frostings, yes but these frostings were not cooked. Now this one was made with Pillsbury fluffy white frosting mix. That's right, no cooking with this mix. Il ne faut pas cuire avec ce mélange, c'est Pillsbury. Pillsbury creamy fudge frosting mix. No cooking and it's guaranteed not to sugar. And the same is true of the three other Pillsbury frosting mixes. Pillsbury creamy caramel, no cooking. Pillsbury creamy fudge, guaranteed not to sugar and Pillsbury's exclusive new milk chocolate. And are they delicious? Any one of them, they have that real old-fashioned, hard-to-make cooked frosting taste. And your family will rave about them. Yes, try Pillsbury frosting mix on a Pillsbury cake real soon. Pillsbury's frosting mix. Et maintenant, retournons à Mademoiselle Patty Page et le grand disque. Well, thanks a lot, Erwin Johnson. I wish I could talk French like that. This is WLOL in TV2 in the Twin Cities. At this time, we interrupt your morning selection of music for an urgent news bulletin. Now, live from the TV2 newsroom, is Jam and Jerry Hill. We are interrupting programming to bring you this breaking news story. We've just received word that a series of violent explosions have just taken place in our nation's capital. At this time, we've received word from a representative for the Department of Civil Defense and local news outlets that have corroborated this claim. 
it is feared that these explosions may be a direct result of Serbian aggression towards NATO, and in this case, the United States. However, we would like to stress that no party has been blamed for these explosions as of yet. We have no idea as to what extent the damage caused by these explosions is as of yet either. And there's been no word on injuries or fatalities. Folks, to be honest with you, the information we've received about this in... The information we've received is sketchy, to put it nicely. And confirmation is nearly impossible at this time, as various news agencies such as the Associated Press, Reuters, and others have been unable to make contact with any of their correspondents in or near the nation's capital as of this time. Repeating, we have received word as a series of explosions have rocked the nation's capital, and we currently have no confirmation as to the extent of damage caused by these explosions or any reports about injuries or fatalities. We will update you as soon as we receive further word on this developing situation taking place in our nation's capital. This is TV2 in Minneapolis, also broadcasting in auditory form on 99.5 WLOL. We now return you to this morning's musical programming. We'll be back. Jemima presents Saturday Morning with Peggy and Chuck. Uh-oh. What? This is the kitchen, not your workshop. <laughs> Thought I'd do it this morning. They got a great idea. Banana pancakes. Banana pancakes? Mm-hmm. Just pour the batter on the bananas. Hey, they were pretty good. You can cook for me every day. Oh, no. I'll tell you what, though. I'll take on the job Saturday mornings. What's the deal? Only a handshake? 
try Chuck's new idea. Over some sliced bananas, pour your Aunt Jemima batter. Add some butter and syrup. You'll like them. Banana pancakes made with Aunt Jemima. Perfect pancakes in 10 shakes. Believe me, this is tough work. Makes you hungry as a bear. And the first thing I reach for is a big bottle of log cabin syrup. Man, what a flavor it has. There's nothing like that real maple flavor of log cabin syrup to bring out the extra goodness of French toast or your favorite pudding. That's why folks buy more log cabin than all other maple blended syrups put together. So get log cabin syrup in the big family size bottle. So many things to do before the baby comes. And one very important thing every lady in waiting should do is drink orange juice twice a day. Know why? Well, expectant mothers use up vitamin C faster. So doctors recommend that they drink twice the normal amount of orange juice every single day. And fresh frozen orange juice from Florida is a real time saver for all you mothers. So keep plenty on hand for baby and the whole family. Imperial Pure Cane Sugar is quick dissolving for quick sweetening. Imperial Pure Cane Sugar. It's new. New as tomorrow. It's pink. Loving pink, like love's first blush. It's Came. Loving pink Came. The soap that says I love you to your skin. The first new thing you notice is the beautiful pink pearl foil wrapper. Then, sealed inside, a new camel. It's pink, loving pink. So beautiful, so gentle. And then, what a surprise. An exciting new fragrance, lovely as a fine imported perfume. Loving pink camel, now packed with more loveliness than you ever dreamed a soap could have. And camel contains the gentlest possible skin cleansers found in any soap, even fine cold cream. It loves you. Loves your skin. No other soap ever loved your skin like new Loving Pink Came. The soap that says I love you to your skin. The tan bag tells you it's the best pure cane sugar, quick dissolving. Imperial pure cane sugar. A brand new outboard motor, adventure ahead. Only seconds to take this wonderful picture. But that's time enough for Mom and her new Ansco Cadet, the A-plus snapshot camera from Ansco that's always ready when you are. Hasn't this happened to you? You see a great picture like this, but it's gone before you can focus your camera. But not with the Cadet. You just set this pointer, look through the picture window viewfinder, and it's yours in color or black and white. No focusing, no dials, no nonsense. No need to pass up those night shots either. Just clip on the cadet flash unit and you've got it, just as you saw it. The complete cadet camera outfit. Everything you need for easy picture taking is yours for only $11.95. Whether it's color films, black and white films, cameras, or projectors, if it's from Ansco, you know it's A+. Official. Official. Here is a special and urgent message for you. This is Jerry Hill, your official civil defense announcer. The Federal Civil Defense Administration has determined that it is advisable for all citizens to leave the city at once. Your safety, and perhaps your life, depends on you remaining calm and following these instructions. Do not attempt to cross town leave the city immediately on the shortest available route. Absent members of the family unit will be reunited with you once you have sufficiently distanced yourself from the city. Federal authorities have determined that an enemy air attack is probable. Again, federal authorities have determined that an enemy air attack is probable. It is not certain that the city of Minneapolis will be attacked, but there is a high probability that it will. Follow these instructions immediately and without delay. Put together an emergency supply kit consisting of food, clothing, bottled water, medicines, and first aid supplies in your car. Load all present members of the family into your vehicle and leave the area. 
Do not try to contact anyone over the telephone. Drive on the shortest available route to get outside of the city. Travel at least, I repeat, at least 50 miles from the city. Do not attempt to cross town or drive across roads being used by others to leave town. Follow civil defense signs and road instructions. Ensure that your car's radio is turned to 640 or 1240 kilo cycles for official instructions. Remain calm and give everyone else the same chance to leave town that you would want for yourself to leave town. We can all get to safe areas if we work together and act calmly. If your car is disabled on the road and cannot be immediately repaired, push it to the side of the road and ride with someone else. Stay in designated traffic lanes and stay in your place. If you try to pass others, you will only cause traffic jams. Do not try to cross evacuation routes and avoid main bridges if at all possible. If you have a place of refuge located 50 miles or more outside of the city, go there and remain there until we have given you further information that will permit your return. If you do not have a place prepared for yourself, drive at least 50 miles outside the target area and locate civil authorities. They will assist you in finding refuge to last you the duration of this civil defense emergency. Do not listen to rumors, and above all, keep calm. Your life depends on it. This is your civil defense announcer, Jerry Hill, with this official Connell Rad message. Official. Official. You're being advised to inform citizens in the Minneapolis area that evacuations should begin to take place immediately. Again, citizens in the Minneapolis area are to evacuate now. We have received confirmation from the Minneapolis branch of the Federal Civil Defense Administration that the previous Connell Red message was valid. Repeating, the previous message was valid. This is Jam and Jerry Hill, and we will be suspending all regularly scheduled programming until this crisis has ceased, and we are given an all-clear from proper civil authorities. I... I'm now being told that... Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, I've just been told that NATO has issued a statement that the Serbian military has mobilized in Europe, and that Serbian forces were spotted near 10 Downing Street in London, opening fire upon citizens. In Paris, laying waste to property and monuments, and that this is but the beginning of a far larger crisis. We've also received word that the president has been unable to be reached at this time, and the representative from the United States Office of Foreign Affairs has stated that connections with contacts in England, France, and Ukraine have been difficult at best and impossible at worst. In addition, the Department of Defense has stated should the Serbians continue to invade and in some cases wipe out for their allied cities and countries, the United States will have no option but to retaliate. And I've just been told that some of our overseas correspondents in Paris have stated that the Serbians have detonated what could be described as high-yield nuclear explosives in the city, in that there is immense life being lost every minute in Paris, France, and that the Arc de Triomphe has been completely destroyed. <sighs> My god. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now going live to a press conference taking place in the state's capital. And I'll send you to our reporter on the scene, Yokana Nuribi. Yokana, what can you tell us about the environment near the capital at the present moment? It's troubling, to say the least, Jerry. When we arrived here in the capital this morning to cover the landmark verdict in the case of serial killer Jacob Holmes, we were met with large crowds of enraged social advocates and family members of the 27 women whom Holmes robbed of their lives during his reign of terror, which lasted from 1943 to 1954. Within five minutes of the hearing's initiation, the Minnesota Supreme Court sentenced Holmes to death a sentence which has never been dealt to a defendant in the history of our state. The focus, however, quickly shifted from Holmes to the news of a massacre near the Serbian border, which took the lives of over 300 servicemen and women in the wee hours of the evening last night. After the news of a massacre reached the public around 15 minutes ago, the capital experienced a massive shift in how people are conducting themselves. Dokana. Can you tell us if there have been any statements from the office of the governor 
maybe even Minneapolis Mayor Hubert Humphrey on the events which took place earlier this morning on the Serbian border. There have not been any statements as of this moment, Jerry, but one can assume that a statement will come shortly, most likely from the always joyful Hubert Humphrey. But this is the first time I have ever seen Mayor Humphrey in a depressed and downright horrified mood. He stated that he's concerned about the impact the Serbians' actions could have on the world, but even more so, what effects these actions could have on life here at home. He fears that, as do many others, that the massacre on the Serbian border could lead to a large-scale global conflict. And with World War II being the war to end all wars, Mayor Humphrey fears that World War III could be the war to end all existence. I also, upon informing the mayor of the emergency broadcast, which was just relayed from Washington, the mayor is urging all citizens in the Minneapolis area whom are not already evacuating, or think that they can, quote, write it out at home to, and I quote, save yourselves while you still can. He has also indicated to me that the governor may be planning on placing the entire state of Minnesota under an evacuation order, or possibly even martial law should further evidence of attacks against our home surface over the coming minutes and hours. Signing off for now, this is Yokohana Nirubi, TV2 News. Thank you, Yokohana. And make sure to keep us updated. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Chairman Jerry Hill, and once again, we are now in emergency programming due to the declaration of World War III. With that, we are now going to bring you the latest news on this dire situation as we have now received an update on the status of the invasion of Europe currently underway at the hands of the Serbian military. Reports have now been sent over the wire that state that the House of National Assembly has begun to make broadcast over its state television and radio stations, advising citizens to begin to prepare for a global conflict in which they, and I quote, will obliterate all who stand in their way. This comes off the heels of the State Department reporting to news agencies that newly sworn in President Matthews, formerly the Vice President of the United States, will be unable to make any further statements at this time, and that he is anything but all right. I don't blame him. He's lost a friend, a colleague, and a lifelong friend. In addition, it has just been confirmed that England, France, Canada, Mexico, China, Japan, and Australia have all declared war against Serbia as well, as it is feared that the free world, and especially the now occupied nations of England and France, which are now under constant attack from the Serbian military, if not defended, may be completely destroyed under the Serbians' iron fist. The DoD has also called the actions of the Serbian military the lowest human beings can possibly go, comparing those actions to those of Adolf Hitler and Nazi Germany throughout the Second World War, which is still recovering from the damage caused to their nation under the reigns of Hitler. Ladies and gentlemen, political analysts have now given us word that it is all but certain that Germany will side with the United States and the other besieged countries in this conflict. I believe this could be a step in tone. Step in stone, sorry. This situation is making us all very tense here at the station. I'll try to keep my composure, but please, bear with us. As I was saying, I believe if Germany sides with the United States and the other besieged countries in this conflict, it can be a great step in stone towards the redemption of Germany after the atrocities which took place by their hands during World War II. We now go live to Jacob Willits, who is currently live from inside of the Pentagon, following a briefing from the new vice president, which took place there a short time ago. Jacob, what did you take away from Vice President Cooper's words? A feeling of pure dread and fear, Jerry. A feeling of pure dread and fear. The newly sworn in vice president was rushed into the Pentagon briefing room around five minutes ago to announce to us here the declaration of war against the Serbian government which was only announced to the public via a presidential message just a few minutes ago. 
one can only assume that possibly due to the over-congestion of telephone lines in the area and presumably across the nation that the Vice President announced that telephone companies in some cases are currently out of operation and that the lines which are currently still active will be rendered inoperable shortly in order to facilitate easier communication between the various branches of government and the military. It is believed that a driving force behind the telephone congestion can be narrowed down to a civil unrest following the explosions which took place in the nation's capital just a short time ago. In my 10 years, a TV2 being the Pentagon correspondent, I have never seen the government this disoriented. It is as if they're running on fumes. This is most likely able to be traced to the death of now former President Theodore Roosevelt, which has thrust the Vice President into the role of Commander-in-Chief. When it comes to beliefs we have heard the public have about the new sworn-in president's whereabouts, guesses range from a luxury resort in Maui to even a meeting with the Serbian government. However, the latter is especially outrageous given the now ongoing conflict between the United States and Serbia, and that this conflict is surely not going to end anytime soon. This is Jacob Willits from the Pentagon, TV2 News. Back to you, Jerry. All right. Thank you, Jacob. We certainly hope that the President will provide us with more information over the coming days and hours in regards to this historic series of events. These horrifying series of events. Now being told that... Are you sure? Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I'm now being told that we have on the phone a caller who claims to have seen the explosions in our nation's capital as they happened. With that, we now welcome Washington. On to TV2. Hello, Washington. You're on the air. Jerry, can you hear me? Yes, Washington. We can hear you loud and clear. And you are live on the air. So, let's start with a simple question. What can you tell us about the damage this series of explosions has caused to the nation's capital? Well, Jerry, the damage is anything but minimal. When I was driving to work this morning, I saw the explosions in my rear view mirror. Within seconds, the blinding light nearly caused me to hurl myself off the road. That's when I knew that these were high-yield nuclear explosions. Washington, I don't think we heard you correctly. Did you just say that a high-yield nuclear explosion took place in the nation's capital? It had to have been. My kids didn't even get dropped off at school this morning before it all started. And thank God for that. We got away from the area fairly quickly and unharmed, but I wouldn't be shocked if the fallout has already begun to spread to the surrounding areas. And now that it's been some time, we've been able to reach a minimum safe distance, but we're going to keep away from Ground Zero as soon as I get off the line with you. We can see the smoke from the Capitol still, but the smoke just isn't... right. Washington, thank God your family was able to make it out in time, but something you just said struck me as odd. You said that the smoke isn't right. Can you elaborate on that? Do you believe the Serbians are responsible for these detonations? First of all, Jerry, this entire situation isn't right. But most importantly, I don't think this was a payload which was delivered onto its target by terrestrial means. I worked for the past four years with the military developing nuclear weapons to use in dire situations of great danger, and nothing we have made, nothing, had a severity such as this explosion did. And even more so, we have developed payloads recently which could completely vaporize the entire state of Hawaii. There is absolutely no way that things here are alright. I'm unsure if you will believe me, Jerry, but what if I told you that the explosion might have been initiated at the very hands of the United States? This was a few days ago. I'd call you mad, but today it seems anything could happen. Can you tell us why you believe this was a direct result of a U.S. operation? Well, Jerry, I was let go from my position as around four months ago after I discovered nuclear test footage taken by the U.S. government around two years ago, which was conducted in the middle of nowhere in Nebraska. Now, what I witnessed in that tape was, it, was an explosion that looked seemingly identical to the nuke which was detonated today in D.C., but the reel was marked for deletion by the DOD. The accompanying file on the experiments noted that the de detonation was meant to, and I quote, completely and utterly destroy objects of unworldly strength. 
end of detonation today, Jerry. It had to have taken place by an airborne payload. There was no sign of this being a ter terrestrial detonation. Washington, at the risk of sounding inconsiderate, given all you've gone through so far today, how can you be so confident that this was an American operation? Have you considered that it could have been the Serbians? Possibly a racially or politically motivated attack? A act of domestic terrorism? Please explain why you're so confident it's our own doing. It just makes no sense. As I said, Jerry, these are quality explosions. I can't say too much or I fear that the party responsible will attempt to eliminate me, but I can promise you that there is no way a racially or politically motivated group could have gained access to this level of explosive power, as these weren't any explosions from a ground source. A ground source? By ground source, I'm referring to a mobile or non-missile based explosive, and these explosions were caused by what looked like Serbian missiles. <laughs> Washington, but just moments ago you said that you believe these were attacks of American doing. I must go, Jerry. I hope I was of help. Washington? Washington! Damn! I'm sorry, folks, for the profanity. For those of you just turning in, this is Jam and Jerry Hill, TV2, TV2 News, Minneapolis. The Serbian government has declared war against the United States and its allies, and Washington, D.C. has been reportedly been destroyed by what could be defined or identified as Serbian missiles. At this time, it does appear that we have time for a short break from these troubling events which have begun to spread like a plague throughout our homeland. Now briefly return to music programming as it seems further information is currently incoming. While we wait for that information to be received, we transition to a track by the Penguins, entitled Earth Angel. We'll be back. This is Bert Instant Refreshment Peel, talking to you from ringside at New York's famous Madison Square Garden. Our guest tonight is the famous hockey star, Philippe Duprade. Bert thought you'd be interested in why Mr. Duprade prefers our refreshing beer. Unfortunately, he speaks no English. Never mind, Harry, I'll handle this. Monsieur Dupre, why do you prefer Peel's beer? Je ne comprends pas. See, Bert, he doesn't. He not. said because Peel's is just what he looks forward to after a long, hard night on the ice. He said but to. Bert, he only said a few Never words. Never mind, Harry. Let's whet a few appetites and show the viewers what Big Philippe means. Here it is, viewers instant refreshment from the first taste. Well, that's because our beer is cool brewed, chilled as it's brewed and aged. And that locks in that clean Peel's flavor. Ah, mais c'est la vieille Peel. Alors, comme c'est rafraîchissant, comme c'est magnifique. What's he saying now, Bert? I think he's trying to say hello to his mother in Montreal. If you sometimes can't sleep because of simple nervousness, overwork, or fatigue, try Somonex. Taken as directed, Somonex helps spring 100% safe sleep. Contains no narcotics, non-habit forming. Take Somonex tonight and sleep. Safe and restful sleep, sleep, sleep. Take Somonex as directed for 100% safe sleep. And now, before we leave, we want you to meet some wheels that are very important to all of us. Yes, the wheels of a mighty railroad. On these wheels roll most of the things you eat, wear, and use every day. Let's see just how efficient and dependable these wheels really are. America's railroads haul more tons, more miles than all other kinds of transportation put together at a lower average charge than any other form of general transportation. No wonder then this basic service is so vitally important to every American and his country. Tune in again two weeks from tonight for another great musical, Springtime in Paris, brought to you by the American Railroad the basic transportation for you and your country.
Poor Cinderella. She couldn't go to the ball until she cleaned the sink. Now Cinderella had it tough. To have no babo made it rough. She worked harder than a dog. But she couldn't get rid of old sink smog. So sad but she didn't have babo. So sad but she didn't have babo. Too bad she could only wish she had. Brighter, finer babo. And then appeared a fairy queen who said, Here's how to get things clean. Babble and power pack suds, my dear. We'll make that sink smog disappear. Yes, Babble's power pack suds sweeps away sink smog in seconds. Whee! No more drudgery. It's Babble for me. That's why so many, 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 my brighter, brighter, Babble. No sink smog with Babble. Kids, now you get rickshaw runner completely free inside every box of post rice crinkles. So I say, rice that is crinkled is sweetest to eat because it's crinkled with sugar, and sugar is sweet. Now what you say? Same as you. Crinkles are crinkly and sweetest to eat because because they are crinkled. Crinkled. Crinkled with sugar and sugar is sweet. Ah, so. Official. Official. Ladies and gentlemen, in compliance with security and civil defense measures set forth by the United States government, we are now activating the Colorado Emergency Alert System. This is an official Colorado Emergency Alert. This is not a test. In a few moments, normal broadcasting on this station will cease for an indefinite period. If you are at home viewing this alert, we urge you to remain in your home, and if it can be helped at all, do not venture outdoors. If you are out and about, or in the process of evacuating per the earlier Colorado Bulletin, it is advisable that you should seek shelter, whatever shelter you can ascertain at this time, and keep a working portable radio nearby at all times to stay informed of any further development. Civil defense information will be broadcasted in 30-minute intervals in most areas, and in specific locations, the 10-minute intervals if the emergency pertains to those specific locations, or those specific locations are currently being attacked. These updates will be broadcast via 640 kHz and 1240 kHz on the regular AM radio dial. Stations, either television or radio, are also being asked to comply with the Federal Communications Commission's Emergency Broadcasting Protocol, ensuring that if your station continues broadcasting during this emergency, that all broadcasting will be news and information, as well as updated civil defense information during the civil defense emergency period. If your station either does not have the appropriate accommodations to transition to a new station, or... If you do not wish to function as a news station, your station should be prepared to cease all auditory and visual transmission over broadcasting airwaves at once, to allow for vital information to be provided to the public at all times. All residents in the Twin Cities area should now turn to 640 kHz on the AM band. If you are in the Milwaukee area and are currently listening to this message, tune to 1240 kHz on the AM band, as extended programming from stations in the Twin Cities area will no longer provide vital information for your local area. In the Twin Cities area, WLOL and TV2 have been designated as official news and Colorado outlets and remain on the air during this emergency. All other stations in the Twin Cities area have now agreed to simulcast TV2 and WLOL's broadcast to bring all citizens still in the Twin Cities area urgent information and to protect the public from imminent situations involving civil unrest. <laughs> gentlemen, this is Jerry Hill, your official civil defense announcer with a special news message. This station has interrupted regular programming at the request of the United States government to participate in the Conrad Emergency Broadcasting System. This station will continue to provide the latest information and emergency alerts to the Minneapolis and Twin Cities area. Most broadcasting stations will remain operational, broadcasting news and official emergency information for areas assigned to them. If you are not in the Minneapolis and Twin Cities area, you should now tune your television or radio to a station providing proper information for your locality. You are listening to the Conrad Emergency Broadcasting System serving the Minneapolis and Twin Cities area. We are now back in the studio and are awaiting further information regarding this attack. However, what we can discern at this time is that this crisis is not, I mark you, not a hoax. 
This message has been given to inform the public of situations involving immediate civil danger. At this time, the United States government has officially declared war against Serbia, and at this time, it is believed that air and ground attacks may impact the Minneapolis and Twin Cities area at any time. If you are currently evacuating the city, continue the evacuation. You've been given no timeline regarding possible attacks against the area, and by God, if you have the time to evacuate, please do so, and do it now. However, if you are not currently evacuating, do not even try to evacuate. You may not have sufficient time to fully prepare and evacuate, as if you have not already begun to take such actions yourself, you will not only endanger your own life, but you will hamper evacuation efforts of others who have already begun to evacuate, and may subsequently cause the deaths of your fellow, of your fellow Minnesotans. If you are evacuated at least 50 miles outside of the city, seek a fallout or bomb shelter at once, as it is unknown where, when, and how this developing global conflict will affect us here at home. Once again, this is your civil defense announcer, Jerry Hill, and we will be staying on the air with you for as long as we can to ensure you are kept informed and up-to-date about the ongoing, what can be assumed, is, thir is the Third World War. We have... Ladies and gentlemen, we have just received a message from the Department of Defense stating that communications with New York, Boston, Milwaukee, Los Angeles, Sacramento, San Antonio, and Orlando have been lost at this time. And that, as of last contact with those cities, they stated that... My God... Ladies and gentlemen, according to the Department of Defense, as of last contact with the aforementioned cities, they received word that the Serbian military has begun an invasion upon the mainland United States. I repeat, upon last contact with New York, Boston, Milwaukee, Los Angeles, Sacramento, San Antonio, and Orlando, they were informed that the Serbian military has begun an air and ground invasion upon the mainland United States. My producer, we would like to advise all citizens receiving this message that we have received direct confirmation from the governor himself mere moments ago that the state is under siege. We're now going to read you a message that I have just received. This message comes from the State Department and it reads as follows. The State Department is now advising all citizens to... I don't. I don't think I'm reading it. Are you sure this? Are you sure this is correct? All right then, ladies and gentlemen. The State Department is now advising all citizens in the state of Minnesota to follow these instructions. Please barricade yourself inside of your home or current location. Do not hesitate. Do it now. This is a protective measure that citizens in the state of Minnesota should take, as well as a gathering of fire. Armed protection will also be helpful in defending life and property should Serbian troops attempt to breach your home. You've also been told that in some cases the Air Force will be bombing cities currently under siege and that the bombs may be nuclear tipped. At this time, the message states that such actions are unlikely at this time, however, and that they have only had to perform a nuclear strike in a small town in Nebraska? Nebraska, the hell is so important in Nebraska? I, I'm sorry, folks. Continuing. Gather blankets, pillows, seat cushions, anything that could protect you and can protect you from possible debris should bombing of the state become a necessary action in the coming hours. All citizens should treat this situation, even though once again no bombings have taken place as of yet, in that they have not been noted as taking place place imminently, you should still treat this as a tornado emergency. Protect yourself from the outside world at all costs. Take shelter in your basement or the most central room in your home. If you are outdoors, seek a sturdy shelding, sturdy building, storm cellar, or cave at this time. Again, the Air Force may be forced to bomb the state. Should attempts by ground forces to repel Serbian forces fail. We now go back to Jacob Willits, who is once again live from the Pentagon, and he is informing us that he has urgent information regarding the situation overseas. Mr. Willits, what do you have to tell the American people at this time? 
Uncle Jerry, as you know, the Pentagon is near Washington, D.C., which has left all of us with no other choice but to remain here on site. And I've been told by the Secretary of Defense that fallout is expected to begin falling in our area shortly. By some miracle, we are still able to establish a connection with you at this time, but, but more importantly, the newly sworn-in President of the United States is quite anxious to put it lightly. And from what I've seen taking place here over the last five minutes, there has been a massive movement of military personnel inside the facility itself. Hold on. Okay, okay, my apologies, Jerry. But there appears to be... Yeah, there is now a situation here inside of the Pentagon. Yes, I I'm hearing a shouting match between the newly sworn in President of the United States and the Secretary of the Interior at this time. From what I can gather, it seems that the President has a statement that he wants to make... Yes, he wants to make a statement to the media, but other officials seem to be attempting to block him and talk him down. Scr oh, scratch that, Jerry. The president has just walked out of the room and is heading my way. It appears that he intends to make a public statement. Mr. President, do, Mr. President, can I have a word? Jacob, isn't it? Yes, sir. I was asking if I could speak to you. Are you on the air? Yes, sir. I was asking if I could have a word. All right. Jerry, Minnesota. My fellow Americans, today I speak in front of you once again with a message of grave importance. I was able to get past the rest of my administration who seem to not care about the American people. They only seem to care about what they call a matter of national security. Well, what security can you provide if there is no nation? Jacob, I'm not sure if you have heard, but... I ordered the Air Force to conduct a nuclear strike against a small city in Nebraska. To repel Serbian troops, if I understand correctly. I wish this was to repel the Serbians. My fellow Americans, my predecessor, my best friend, told me something yesterday. He knew that this was coming. And he knew that we couldn't help but take them out. Take it out. It? It? There is! My God. It's here! President Matthews. Jacob? The hell is going on at the Pentagon? Jerry, Jerry, can you hear me? Yes, Jerry, the president, as well as some military members, have begun to disperse in front of the press room doors, and those, yes, those who have not followed their brothers in arms in the press room doors have ushered us into an elevator. Yes, we're now moving, and okay, we're being sent deep underground into the facility at this time. Yes, okay, we're being sent into the elevator, and yes, the elevator is going to go deeper underground at this time. All I can tell you from the short amount of time my attention was on the press room doors is it appeared that the door was just moving. Moving? What do you mean, the door was moving? You said just a few moments ago that there was fallout outside of the Pentagon. How could anyone have gotten so far inside of the Pentagon to reach the press room doors? Jerry, Jerry, from what I can hear... The military personnel guarding the door began shouting the phrase, It is here, the final hour. Move everyone into the bunker. Immediately after I saw shotguns and automatic rifles being loaded and readied by several personnel, I, and I fear that something has breached the Pentagon doors. I fear that something is in... Jacob? Jacob? Christ. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it appears that something is going on inside of the Pentagon at this time. That we have lost connection with Jacob Willits. We will attempt to reestablish contact with him as soon as possible. But at this time, I'm being told that there is another message inbound from the Conrad Emergency Broadcasting System. Please stand by. 
We interrupt our current program to cooperate in federal and civil defense measures as requested by the United States government. This is a Colonel Rad Radio Report. I repeat, this is a Colonel Rad Radio Report. This is your Civil Defense Coordinator, Jason Sears. This area has been placed under Air Defense Warning Red. You are urged to seek shelter now. This is not a test. You are urged to seek shelter now. Proceed, if conditions warrant, outdoors and in an orderly fashion to the nearest underground shelter, whether it be a cave or civil defense shelter. As you just heard from Mr. Spears, the United States government has advised all citizens to immediately proceed to the lowest floor of their homes, as this is the only option. But, you can, if it is safe to do so, and you can do it now, venture outdoors and proceed to your nearest protectorate bunker, cave, storm shelter, or basement. We now will pause for station identification here on TV2 in 99.5 WLOL. Please stand by. Federal Communications Commission, as we have begun to experience difficulties connection, connecting to the master frequency of the Connell Rad Emergency Broadcasting System. We have also received calls from all over the state, including one caller from Wisconsin, reporting that they have lost the ability to hear any updates from the Connell Rad Emergency Broadcasting System as well. First of all, we are confused how any of you were able to contact us as telephone lines were reportedly taken offline some time ago for civilian use, but alas, we thank you for the information. Most importantly is the fact that this is not an isolated issue pertaining only to us here at TV2 and WLOL. We have been checking our sister frequencies, or the stations the FCC told us would be simulcasting our broadcast going forward, but it appears that they are all off of the air at this time. In defense of the FCC and the Department of Civil Defense, the Colorado Emergency Broadcasting System has never had to activate nationally for a prolonged period in the past, with only brief nationwide tests lasting but a few moments taking place before today. We have just received a message from the Department of Defense. They have stated that an investigation was launched into the status of the city of San Francisco, and that as of now, there are no signs that the city was impacted by a nuclear or neutronic weapon, in that, according to them, they have still maintained contact with officials in the city, with the DOD being truly confounded as to what could be confer occurring in San Francisco, and that they believe that possibly Serbian officials have been placed in broadcasting roles, and that reports about a mysterious fog have been truly preposterous in that they have labeled TV25 and KCUN at this time a Serbian-controlled broadcasting station. They have also stated that there have been no signs of radiation or fallout, which we believe is an enigma, and that something much more nefarious is taking place at this time. But alas, this is the information we have at the moment. We have received reports somehow from correspondents in Tokyo, Montreal, Melbourne, Sydney, and many others. We now go live to Yokana Narugi, who has some vital information for us to hear. Yokana, what can you tell us that we don't know already? Jerry, I cannot believe I'm saying this, but it appears as if the gunfire here in the state capital has ceased, and that we have been cleared to slowly depart our location. My God, Jerry, it appears that something horrific has taken place here in St. Paul. It is mesmerizing. We have now exited our shelter, and it looks as if the city has been transformed into a winter wonderland. Yokana, can you please elaborate on what you consider a winter wonderland? I mean, we're only days away from Labor Day. I do not know what is going on, but... I feel extremely unsettled that this situation is not of a natural nature. I have a feeling something that has never been seen before is taking place in St. Paul. My God, Jerry, I wish she had cameras to capture this unprecedented scene in the Capitol. I am currently walking outside of the Capitol building and on the grounds all around us. I am seeing what appears to be human intestines and other remnants of human beings. 
There is just nothing left here but death. What do you mean, there is nothing left but death? Can you please elaborate? Jerry, I mean, there is nobody here. It's as if the capital is a ghost town. And judging by the state of the intestines and other body parts we can see just spread throughout all the streets, it's as if something dissolved the bodies and just left the remains behind like a snowstorm leaves behind heavy snow. It's just... all dissolved. There are truly no signs of life whatsoever. All that's left is blood, guts, and some type of gray, snow-like substance spread all over the place, and Serbian weapons. Serbian weapons? Does that to suggest that possibly whatever left the blood and guts killed even the Serbians? Yes, Jerry. I believe that's the only logical explanation. Something extremely wrong has happened here. No human beings could have done this. I just... I don't know what to say. Wait, Jerry. I think I can hear something. Can you hear that? It seems as if something is producing a very low-tone humming, like a testing tone. Yokana, please respond. Do not try to find the noise, for Christ's sake! Oh, shit. Ladies and gentlemen, apologize for the profanity, but it appears that we have lost our connection with Yokana Narugi in St. Paul. And it appears that if Yokana's report is indeed true, we are dealing with a far greater force of destruction than the Serbian military. Though the Serbians may not be the true threat to democracy, we should be snuffing out after all. I've also just been handed a press relief from Chairman Mao Zedong in China, in a joint press re release from themselves in, collab re in collaboration with the Japanese government. The message once translated states, and I quote, that there has been an explosion of unprecedented magnitude somewhere near the Serbian capital. And if this report is to be believed, mind you, the force of this explosion was at least 60 times that of Hiroshima. And that it is believed that the entire Serbian nation has been destroyed as a result of this detonation. They state that they do not know where the explosion came from or who is to blame, but that an explosion is currently in progress by representatives. I'm sorry, folks. Let me rephrase that. An expedition is currently in progress by representatives from the North Atlantic Treaty Organization to evaluate the damage that this explosion has caused. They have stated that they are en route to Serbia in order to assist in the evaluation of damage and to evacuate any survivors to medical facilities. The United States has also made a very brief statement denying responsibility for this explosion. In addition, the British government has stated that an unheard of amount of radiation has been detected emanating from Serbia at this time, that they have intercepted shortly before the explosion took place a message from Serbian state television. This message was... Yes, this message was roughly as what follows. The time of reckoning is at hand. The sins of our fathers and mothers have become restless. And the Ratlins will soon take what is theirs. They also stated to the citizens that they should... Jesus... They stated to the citizens that they should eliminate themselves, via and only via complete self-immolation. Those poor bastards. They also state that the Retlins are the ones referred to in Serbian bedtime stories as Baba Yaga. If I remember correctly, Baba Yaga is a demon from Serbian for folklore. And if these messages are to be believed, ladies and gentlemen, we may be dealing with something much more dire than a war. We may be on the brink of annihilation. And the feeling in my gut is correct. We are anything but safe. We now 
We now take you to a message from the President of the United States. Please stand by. My fellow Americans, it is with great pride that I announce that, as of this time, all Serbian attacks against our great nation have ceased. We do not know why or what has caused the Serbians to retreat from our great nation, but at this time, the threat they posed to our country has subsided. While we are still at war with Serbia, there have been no reports of any transmissions of surrender from Serbian broadcasts, press releases, or transmissions from inside of the Serbian homeland. But at this time, we are going to be lifting Conrad emergency broadcasting protocols effective immediately. However, this situation may redevelop, so we ask that you still stay tuned to news stations in case of further attacks. Well, in a moment of both pure joy and pure confusion, I announced to you all that the message you just heard was valid. Repeating message you just heard was valid. The danger is over. However, I urge you to stay tuned to the station. And before we enter our 9 a.m. music block, I should put something into perspective for you all. The world has always been in a perpetual state of conflict when it comes to worldwide military engagements in the past. And today, not even an hour after the declaration of World War III, the conflict has seemingly come to an end. Mind you, World War II is a conflict that went on for over ten years. While World War III, if it is truly over, is a conflict that didn't even go on for several hours, let alone a day. I personally feel as if something is seriously wrong here, and that the conflict, despite what the president says, is anything but over. Especially if the report from the British, Japanese, and Chinese is to be, is to be believed. There has been transmissions or originating from Serbia in that something is seriously wrong. You now, with the situation seemingly being ended for a short time here, turn you to your regularly scheduled music programming at this time. We will also have news from around the world shortly, and we will interrupt programming again should we receive further news on the situation in Serbia. But with that, we take you to some advertising while we reorganize ourselves here at TV2 and 99.5 WLOL. Please stand by. Yes, sink smog. That dull, gray, dingy film on sinks. Now here's what causes sink smog. If you looked under a magnifying glass, you would see that even the finest porcelain has millions of tiny pits. And that's where you find... Sink smog. I'm the guy who makes your sink look dull and dingy. I gather up grease food particles. I fill up the porcelain pits and give ladies terrible fits. <laughs> She's going to try and get rid of me with an ordinary cleanser. <laughs> ordinary cleansers can't clean me away when they don't get down here where I stay. <laughs> That's why you ought to try Babbo. That's why you ought to buy Babbo. That's why so many, many, many use brighter, brighter Babbo. Yes, Babbo's power-packed suds work down into those porcelain pits. Sweep away sink smog in seconds. Babbo cleans your sink brighter, whiter than any other cleanser in the world. Such a clean fragrance, too. That's why so many, 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 my brighter, brighter, Babbo. No sink smog with Babbo. Rangers, whatever you do, don't miss this wonderful chance to get a Captain Video Picture ring, a ring exactly like the one that the Video Ranger and all video agents wear. Right on top of the ring, there's an action photograph of Captain Video himself, and he's holding his famous static beam gun. This picture is sealed onto the top of the ring under a special transparent stone. Now, you'll use the Captain Video Picture Ring in your games and spy adventures. You'll use it instead of a password at all your own Secret Ranger meetings. And you'll wear it at all times to show that you're fighting alongside Captain Video in his battle as guardian of the safety of the world. Now, in order to get your Captain Video identification ring, all you do is just ask for luscious powerhouse candy bars at your favorite candy store. Then, after you enjoy this wonderful taste treat, send in the wrappers. If you get the regular nickel size powerhouse, then you'll need two wrappers and 10 cents in coins. Remember, that's two of the nickel size wrappers. Or, 
If you get the big 10 cent jumbo powerhouse, then you need only one wrapper in 10 cents. Got that? Well, either way, you mail those wrappers, along with your name and address, to Powerhouse, Box 95, New York 46, New York. You better write that address down so you don't forget it. I'll repeat it. It's Powerhouse, Box 95, New York 46, New York. <laughs> Folks, I have made the decision to interrupt programming once again, as we have indeed received further information regarding the ongoing situation in Serbia. For those of you who are just turn tuning in, we received a report not too long ago that the entire nation of Serbia was destroyed by an unprecedented explosion. We have just received a press bulletin sent directly to TV2 from a representative from the... the... the hell? From the National Aeronautics and Space Administration in the Department of Defense? What the hell is this about? It states that... let's see here... It states that the Department of Defense has been in coordination with the British government, the Chinese government, and the Japanese government states that those who have now arrived on site near the Serbian border, same site that was list, witness to the senseless murders of hundreds of servicemen and women who set this conflict into motion in the first place. They report that it appears that Serbia has been attacked, and that the circumstances of this attack are quite disheartening. They report that there has been a massive object which has seemingly crashed directly into the Serbian House of the National Assembly that upon further investigation took place at the House of the National Assembly itself, that the ja Japanese, Chinese, British, and American representatives initially sent to the House of National Assembly have found all Serbians inside of the location have been terminated. Again, it has been confirmed that a massive object of unknown origin has crashed and lodged itself in the Serbian House of the National Assembly, and that all life inside of the location has been terminated. So those of you just tuning in, once again, my name is Jam and Jerry Hill, and you are tuned in to TV2 News. We apologize for the confusion regarding what is happening in Serbia, as we too are confused, just as you are. What we know is that it appears an event has taken place which has left the world and all of us here at 99.5 WLOL and TV2 in shock. And to voluntarily suspend all programming until further notice. We repeat, we have made the decision to voluntarily suspend all regular programming until further notice. With that being said, we can now confirm that the reports from the NASA and DOD press release have been confirmed by fact-checkers to be truthful. The Department of Defense has now reported that they have established contact with Clement Voroshlov, the leader of Serbia. And approximately 30 minutes ago, just moments before the catastrophe landed in Serbia, that Voroshlov has in fact surrendered to the North Atlantic Treaty Organization seems that this reporter that Varishlov may have in fact known that something was bound to happen shortly after he surrendered, as the words he spoke to the leaders of the free world were almost identical to those which were transmitted on the airwaves to the Serbian people some time ago. Those who were able to listen to the address of surrender while it happened stated that the Serbian leader verbatim mentioned Retlins, who at this time are believed to be responsible for the attack on the House of the National Assembly. However, it is unknown who or what the Retlins are, as there are no, ci as there are no known civilizations that represent their citizens as Retlins, which has led the National Aeronautics and Space Administration to cite that possibly the Retlins could not be of this world at all. For more on this, we now go to Jenny Blank, who is live from Houston at the headquarters of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, in hopes of being informed why NASA believes that the Retlins may not be human. Jenny, I, I hope you are doing all right.
I am Jerry. Today I am live from the headquarters of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, and I am here with the head of the organization, Jacob Nickers. Jacob, first and foremost, thank you for speaking with me in such precious times. It's my pleasure, Jenny, and in all honesty, it's my obligation. Now, first off, can you tell us about your history at NASA? Yes, I began working with NASA in 1932, around the time that we were putting together the Mega Rock proposal with the Soviet Union. The Mega Rock proposal eventually led to the first manned flight into space in 1943. Is that correct? Yes. In fact, for those of you who are familiar with myself, I was one of the three lucky men who flew into the Great Beyond in 43. But enough about me. We're here to talk about the Rutlands. So I presume you know about the Rutlands in detail, correct? Unfortunately, I do. To explain it, we must retell what happened on Rack 1 in 1943. Shit, boys, are we really about to do this? Do you think if we weren't about to do this for real I'd get all dressed up like a marshmallow for you, Jake? I suppose not, but just think. For thousands of years humanity has been bound to this place. The IRS is sure to continue that tradition even if we go off planet, Jake. They'll just find another way to lock us in our homes. But we're about to do what's never been done before. We are about to truly see what's up there. You boys sure know how to make a war dog look like a little kid on Halloween. See, I knew these suits look ridiculous. Well, if you don't want to find out what happens up there if you don't have the suit on, be my guest. Just make sure they alert the next of kin. Fuck you, Jake. Calm down, you two. Everyone's going to be fine as long as we don't go up there and mess it all up. Alright, Houston. We have conducted pre-flight checks and protocols. Please advise. Affirmative, Nebraska. You are cleared to begin your engines. Good luck, Ben. Any last words for us here on the ground? The president himself better be down there when we get back with a cold beer for me. Because god damn it, I could go for a ice cold even light. Affirmative, Cooper. Roosevelt and Truman are down here waiting for you with a cold one. Over. Final preparations complete. Soviets on site in Nebraska to assist with retrieval operations at conclusion of mission. Takeoff in 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, ignition. You happy you have a marshmallow now, Cooper? Christ. You could have told me sooner it would be this intense. Fuck. Houston, how's it looking down there on your end? Looking mighty good down here, Rack 1. The signal's still holding up up there. Over. Affirmative, Houston. Receiving you loud and clear. Wait a moment. What is that? Houston, it appears that something has appeared on our radar. Please advise. Over. Power down the radar now, Rack 1! That is an order! Houston, radar has been powered down. Any chance you can tell us what the hell's going on down there? We picked up multiple aircraft on your radar heading directly for your position. Seems someone else knows what we're doing up here. I thought this op was need to know only. It was supposed to be. Uh, we're looking into the data as we speak. Are all flight systems still nominal? Affirmative, Houston. Everything is purring like a pussycat up here. He means to say yes. Come on, can't I have a little bit of fun up here, Marshmallow Man? Rack 1, are you there? Rack 1, please be advised that there appears to be a debris field approaching your vessel at this time. Can you see anything from outside, Rack 1? It looks like some kind of... snow. Some kind of blackened snow. Any clue what it is? Christ. Rack 1, please power off your engines. Have you lost your minds? It's not our order. The order comes from Roosevelt. Are you absolutely certain? Yes. 
Rack one, power off your engines, that's an order. Guys, is it just me or is the glass breaking? Did Cooper just say the glass appeared to be breaking? Fireman of Houston, I can confirm. It's as if the snow is... dissolving the vessel. Please advise. Do you see a turquoise lever next to your seat? Yes. Pull it. Pull it now! Oh my god, Houston, it's dissolving Cooper. The hell did you send us into? Pull the fucking lever, Jacob! Pull the fucking lever, now! Jacob, Eric, are you there? Please respond. I'm here, Houston. We managed to eject from the vessel. We're in some kind of casket now. What is this? It will ensure your landing is safe and that you don't die, gentlemen. As of now, this mission is classified. This never happened. The Soviets will convene and release you from the pods when you land. Good luck, gentlemen. So, to put it lightly, the Rack 1 mission went horribly wrong, to say the least. Following our landing, we were briefed by the President himself that we, what we had encountered was indeed not unexpected. This is certainly a bombshell about the truth behind the American space program, but in what regards does this have anything to do with the events of the past hour? Well, that's the thing that it seems nobody else is mad enough to tell the American public. As you've heard, there have been objects which have impacted locations in Serbia, most notably the House of the National Assembly, as well as One Times Square in New York. One Times Square was hit? We've heard nothing of that. That's because they know exactly what I do. And what would that be? That the aggressors who have caused these impacts are the same aggressors who caused the Rack 1 disaster. You see, following the disaster, I was stationed as an, as an analyst at a military base in Alaska. A military base that was converted to an observation facility to observe the same snow-like substance Miss Narugi reported seeing in St. Paul. Are you saying that there is a possible extraterrestrial involvement in this series of events? Extraorbital. Extraorbital? When I say that, I am referring to a force which does not come from another planet, but comes directly from, Earth, from the Earth's orbit. As if this force has been orbiting our planet for ages now? Yes, when we refer to the Rutlands, who we have named them... They are very much not that different from ourselves in neurological makeup. They have a similarly sized brain and a central nervous system. However, they possess weaponry unlike anything the militaries of man have ever dreamed of. They possess weaponry capable of incinerating beings within a matter of moments. That would explain the dissolved bodies. Precisely. The snow, however, is something entirely different. The snow is not a biological weapon. It is not a weapon of any kind. The snow is how they reproduce. Excuse me? The snow contains a bio biology-altering substance which can enhance humans to be closer to the level of consciousness of that of their own. In 1948, the Army conducted tests at the observation site in Nebraska. When a human body was directly injected with the snow, they initially have no biological differences. However, over hours and days following ingestion, the human body begins to shut down. That is our belief if we had tested it on a living being. But you just said the army tested it on a human. Yes, but they tested it upon the long-deceased body of my fellow astronaut Matthew Cooper. He was the one left behind in the Rack 1 when we impacted the Redlands. When Rack 1 landed, it had been severely damaged, as had Cooper's body. Over the first few hours, Cooper appeared to be dead, but two days after the disaster, he briefly regained consciousness. He was speaking a language that none of the scientists could comprehend, but it was later determined to be a long-lost form of Latin. When it was finally translated, we found out that Cooper was asking for water. Thankfully, it only took around a week for historians to decipher his speech, and upon being administered water directly onto the body, 
his at the time exposed brain, began to immediately disappear. The body itself was healing simply by coming in contact with water. When they realized that fact, they continued to douse his body in water, and after about 25 liters of water, his body had miraculously healed in its entirety. But how is that possible? Why was it possible? That's what the observation site was constructed to find out. Following this, upon medical examination, it was determined that Cooper's brain was still active as ever, while shockingly, all of his other vital organs remained inactive. Around a month later, while I was observing Cooper, he regained consciousness once again. Jacob. Jacob, is that you? Matthew? You're speaking English again. Where in the hell are we? Nebraska. Do you remember what we were doing here? Not at all. Say, you mind unplugging me from all of this bullshit? Unplug you? What do you mean? There's a big fucking cable in the back of my goddamned skull. You think I'm stupid? Just make it stop. Pull out the fucking cable. I think you should be dead. You really don't remember the crash? All I remember is your dumbass making me wear a marshmallow suit. Well, at least you remember that. What do you think this cable in the back of your skull is doing? It's talking about 1958. Everything's in this language I don't understand. Something about Redlands. Matthew, what are the Redlands telling you? That we never should have tried to leave this planet. That if we try to leave again they will have no choice. The Retlands were telling him that there would be a great cataclysm should humanity attempt to leave the planet again. I'm sorry folks, but we are going to have to leave this fascinating report. As I've been told, we've re-established contact with Jason Willits at the Pentagon. Jason, can you hear me? I can, Jerry, and my god is it good to hear your voice once again. Well, Jacob, from what my producer just told me, you have an announcement of great proportions to share with us, is that correct? I do. And shockingly, this message comes from not me, but this man. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States. My god. Mr. President, hope you're doing alright. I wish that I was, Jerry. I really do. But unfortunately, I must come clean to the American people about what is going on here. About what is really going on here at the Pentagon. At this time, the Pentagon has been breached. I'm sorry, I think I misheard you there. Did you just say the Pentagon has been breached? Yes. Around the time that Jacob lost connection with you, a group of people from God knows where attempted to break through the Pentagon press room, and it appears that they are currently attempting to break into our current location. Though they will have quite a hard time breaking into the Situation Room here at the Pentagon. Since we've evacuated here before, we could get a good look at the intruders. We have no clues as to who they are or where they come from. As we are all aware, heavy radiation is present outside of the Pentagon. What I can confirm is that there have been more impacts by unknown objects, much like that of the object which impacted the House of the National Assembly in Serbia. The locations that we now know that have been impacted are New York City, Boston, Sacramento, Seattle, and Birmingham. My allies overseas have also reported impacts in Jakarta, Montreal, Mexico City, somewhere in Antarctica, Sydney, London, Paris, and Berlin, to name a few. I have one question for you, Mr. President, if you don't mind. Just before we established contact with you, we were hearing a report from a representative from the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, abbreviated as NASA, who stated something alluding to these attacks being perpetrated by Retlins, I believe he called them. Can you either confirm or deny these rumors? Jerry, I trust our great scientists at NASA almost 100% of the time, but any claims that the Retlins committed these attacks is utterly preposterous. So you acknowledge on the record that Retlins do exist? That is not my statement, Jerry. I was the vice president for two terms, and now I am serving as the president of the United States. If there was any army or country that presented themselves with as ridiculous a name as Retlands, I sure as hell would know about it. I apologize for assuming. Mr. President, a uh, more relevant question. Do you have any information as to what the intruders at the Pentagon have been doing as of late, or what their intentions are? 
They have been guarding the elevators that transport them down to the level where the Situation Room is here at the Pentagon, and while we have been able to hear them shooting at the doors leading into the Situation Room, they have not made any significant progress. That's two feet of steel. You're not getting through that, even if you have heavy rounds and explosives. That I believe. Mr. President, I also want to ask you another question regarding a matter brought up by that same spokesman from NASA. He stated, in the RAC-1 catastrophe, as it seems it was, one, very much so, it has come to our attention that one man, a Mr. Matthew Cooper, has experienced biological changes after RAC-1 allegedly crashed to the ground, with the spokesman claiming that his body was able to remain active despite the heart and other vital organs remaining inoperative. Do you have anything to say about Matthew Cooper or these claims? I'll say this. I was childhood friends with Mr. Cooper. I went to the same elementary school as him. I participated in nuclear attack drills with him. I know his wife and children. Matthew Cooper has been dead for 15 years. He died when Rack 1 crashed to the ground. His body was in pieces and his skull had been cut in half. Matthew died while trying to explore the great beyond and he lived as an American hero. If he was still alive, he would be here protecting me as a member of the Secret Service. Of that, I'm sure. But to make it absolutely clear, Matthew Cooper never regained consciousness after the crash. He was killed instantly. I carried his coffin to be buried six feet under, and any claims that my friend was anything but a mortal man is sickening. Absolutely sickening. That it is. Thank you for speaking with us, Mr. President. Please keep us in the loop. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was the President of the United States in an exclusive interview. And with that, we are now going to take a short break here on TV2 and via the radio on WLOL. We'll be back in 60 seconds. Please stand by. Excuse me, lady, but floor cleaning doesn't have to be that tough. Listen, mister, I know a little more about floor cleaning than you do. Now, would you be moving your big foot so I can get home sometime tonight? You, Mr. Clean, can get your work done faster. Faster? Much faster. Of all leading cleaners, Mr. Clean is now the most powerful ever put into a bottle. Well, seeing is believing. What? You, Mr. Clean, cleans faster. Floors, walls, doors. Faster than other liquid cleaners. Beautiful. And you're going to like new Mr. Clean's unbreakable plastic bottle. Mister, the way you talk about new Mr. Clean, you should be on TV. You know, I think I have seen him on TV. Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean, Mr. Clean. here on TV2 and 99.5 WLOL on the radio. We are back on this, to say the least, eventful day in not just our nation's history, but the history of humanity itself. That's an oversimplification, if I'm being entirely honest, but most of us here at TV2 are running on fumes already, so we apologize for informalities during the remainder of this broadcast, for however long we have to broadcast. We do, however, have an obligation to you, the American people, to continue to update you on everything that has been going on and will continue to go on. To recap the events of late, we've had a brief interview with the now President of the United States in which he broke down in anger upon questioning regarding the nature of Lieutenant Matthew Cooper, a personal friend of the President and former astronaut, and he has now refused to make any further comments regarding the matter. In addition, it has been confirmed that in a shocking turn of events, the reason we initially lost contact with Jason Willits at the Pentagon was due, and I can't believe I'm saying this, to the Pentagon being breached by an as-of-yet unidentified group. In addition, my producer has just handed me a memo 
that was issued moments ago by the United States Department of Foreign Affairs. Something major has seemingly happened within the last 30 minutes across the globe. It seems that even though radio and television signals have been ordered to remain operational only to inform non-combatants of the latest information, an unidentified group has hijacked television signals worldwide. And this can't be right. Are you sure? All right. And it seems that they are continuously broadcasting a cryptic message. First, and pardon my disbelief here, but the message begins by claiming that the broadcast's originating signal is TV2. It's ridiculous because we are we have no hand in these broadcast hijackings, but alas, the memo continues, as does the footage, to show a regularly scheduled end of broadcasting day video package, but continues on to show a message stating that the station is currently experiencing technical di difficulties before continuing on to broadcast the following what can only be called a manifesto. It reads as follows, and I quote, Ladies and gentlemen, we know your fears, and we know your deceit, and as you lie under the summer heat, we watch you while you sleep. End quote. A strange frequency then plays behind the text, stating that whoever sent this message can watch you while you sleep. Continuing on, it states, once again, I quote, We have been waiting for you to notice us. While this message may be a crime, we promise you it is our treat. Though you may cry and you may weep, we watch you while you sleep. Do not worry, for we will not kill you. We will not make even the slightest peep from... Oh my god. From your lifeless bodies, after destruction, rewards we shall reap. You should know by now that no one other than us can compete. We see you as you watch this, so please go take a seat. If you try to come and find us, never again will you maintain peace. This is not a drill, love. Remember to not make a peep, or else we shall no longer say we watch you while you sleep. Since you were a child, we've watched you, from training wheels to steady feet. If you think this is a game, then how about a little treat? If you try to come and fight us, we'll kill your family to the beat. If you want to see us, then your life shall forever cease. What? Tom, this can't be right. This has been broadcasting for the past 30 minutes? But... The public's only known about Matthew Cooper since our interview. What in God's name is going on? I'm sorry, folks, for getting distracted there. This is just... This is just very confusing to all of us here at TV2, as I assume it is for you watching and listening. But the message concludes by saying... Once again, and I quote, We know about your secret. Matthew Cooper was our sheep. In Serbia, you will see that we are not your saviors, but your destruction, plain and sweet. We'll show you now our lesson. We watch you while you sleep. End quote. The feed then shows an outline of what appears to be an inhuman being standing in a darkened room before continuing forward to say the following. You cannot escape us. We know you. Oh, yes, we do. I I can't say the end of this, folks. The, the, the feed then returns to a message stating that TV2 knows who has sent the message and that it was planned. However, we would like to state that we have no clue who, or more fittingly, it seems, what sent this message and what is the power to hastily overtake control of so many broadcasting stations in such a short period of time, not to mention over such a broad broadcasting radius. 
The FCC has also stated that stations in the United States have begun to receive this broadcast. We now have Yokana and Ruby back here at home base, and I think that was a good time to ask. It's as good of a time to ask as any. Yokana, what do you think these hijackings could possibly mean? Jerry, I think that the originator of these broadcasts could possibly be the group that has been identified by NASA as the Retlands. Yokana, you state that you believe the originator of these broadcasts we just reported on could be the Retlands. Why do you believe that is the case? Could you please elaborate for our viewers? Well, from what we know, the Retlands reside around the Earth in the atmosphere, which is why Mr. Nickers refers to them as extraorbital beings. Whoever fabricated these broadcasts, which it is quite obviously the Retlands, claims that they watch humanity as we sleep, along with our entire lives, from gestation to death. If they reside in the skies that are always above us, then they must have the technology or geographical advantage that would allow them to observe humanity almost constantly, with only roofs obscuring their vision, which leaves one culprit, the Retlands. You know, Yokana, you might just be onto something there. But speaking about what was contained in this manifesto, the most alarming message in it was that they, quote, will kill us all to the beat in that there is destruction from which rewards shall be reaped. That thought has also crossed my mind. As we were driving back to Minneapolis, we listened to the report from NASA. Based on what we heard, it wouldn't be surprising if the Retlands were to blame for nearly everything that occurred in our state today. From a force superior to ourselves. But this force also seems to want to confine us to the Earth and keep us grounded here. It's as if humanity has been their prisoners for ages. Can you please explain further, Jerry? I'm not sure I follow. What we know is that the event that set this conflict into motion in the first place was an attack on a U.S.-held base on the border of Serbia, which Serbia has vehemently denied was of their doing. Who's to say that the Retlands purposely attacked the U.S. military base, killed troops, and then left before their presence could be reported, therefore leaving Serbia as the only suspects? As if the Retlands purposefully attempted to orchestrate a false flag operation? In my mind... If I'm right, it wasn't an attempted false flag operation, it was a false flag operation. This also makes sense logistically, as to why the Serbians were so open to surrender in such a rapid period of time. Think about it. What force, if they tried provoking the most powerful military on the planet, would just surrender? They surely would want to gain something. Not just to surrender. Jerry? Yok Hannah? Are you there? Yes, Jacob, we are here. It's good to hear your voice. What is going on at this time at the Pentagon? Can you please give us all an update? I can't believe this. The intruders are melting the door to the Situation Room. Jacob... What? The intruders are doing what? They are melting the doors separating us from them here at the Pentagon. Also, the president has seemingly moved into another bunker here in the Situation Room. I followed him in here but I can't seem to find him at this time. What can you see in there? This is likely the first time anyone other than high-ranking Pentagon officials has ever entered the room. It's beautiful but in the worst way. In the worst way? In the worst way? This isn't a bunker, Yokohana. This is a lab. And What the fuck? Jacob, what the hell is going on? And remember, you're on live television. I apologize, York Hannah, but if we had cameras in here, you'd have the same reaction. The president lied. About what? Matthew Cooper didn't die. Jacob, what do you mean? Matthew Cooper didn't die. Please, please enlighten us. Why do you say that? Because he is right in front of me in some kind of human fish tank. There is this blood-red water that he submerged in. This is both fascinating and horrifying simultaneously, Jerry. His body has been consumed by something. 
It lines up with the reports from NASA about human biology being altered after coming in contact with that snow-like substance. Cooper's left leg first and foremost is entirely exposed. You can see where muscle tissue used to be, but it's now completely black. Like a blackboard, dare I say. And he now has only four toes. His left arm is in a similar condition, with black and tissue exposed, but he still has five fingers. The most horrifying change I can see is directly where his skull should be. It looks as if a tumor has grown at the back of his skull, and it now extends backwards around three feet. He also now stands at a height of around 14 feet tall, at least. Jesus Christ. What the hell are they doing down there? Jerry, I just heard an explosion and I'm now seeing a light shining into the room. I'm going to speak soft but I want to try and tell you what is going on. It appears as if. Jerry it appears as if a group of at least 10 to 15 persons have just entered into the, oh my god. Jacob? Jacob! Are you there? Please respond! They spotted me, but they aren't raising their weapons it seems. The persons who just entered the room look as if their entire bodies are in the same state that Cooper's leg and arm are. They stand at least 20 feet tall. They are barely even able to stand in the room, the ceiling seems to only be about 35 feet over our heads, and they're still standing on an elevated surface. There is one who is now approaching me with its hands up. It's... it's trying to communicate in sign language. My god, they're in... they're intelligent? They are telling me that, Jerry they are stating that they will grant you an interview. They want an interview? Did you just say that the intruders at the Pentagon want nothing more than an interview? Jerry, I think you should take it. They say that if I speak your questions, they will sign an answer to me. Well, I guess this wouldn't be the craziest thing that's happened today. What the hell? Alright, start with a simple question. Who are you? And why are you here? He asks who you are and why you are here. Jerry, they say that they are the beings that humans call the Retlands, and that they are here to retrieve the first man. What is your endgame here? Do you want to apprehend and take away the presidents of the United States? Do you want the president? They say that they do not refer to the chief commander, but that they refer to Matthew Cooper. They say that in 1943 he was chosen to be a survivor. Alright, I'll ask a follow-up question. Is that to say that your intentions are hostile towards us? Are your intentions hostile? They say that they have chosen a select few to be spared but that over their time, watching us while we sleep. They have chose those who will ascend to their ranks, and that all others will be terminated. What the fuck? Why do you hate us? What makes you want to cause our extinction? When have we ever done anything to you? We, when have we ever attacked you? He asks, why do you hate us, and why do you want to cause our extinction? They state that this has nothing to do with hate. They further say that when we launched our ship into the atmosphere in 1943 we attempted to expand our rule to the stars and that such things cannot be tolerated any longer. So you mean to say that this is all over the rack one incident? That was 15 years ago. Why the hell have you waited 15 years to come and finally attempt to make the human race extinct? Why have you waited 15 years to kill us? They say that it is because in the past we had only attempted to leave the planet once but that, there was another attempt to leave the planet. This morning. What in the fuck are you talking about? He asks what you are talking about. They state that they believe the words that the government used to describe it were, nuclear attacks. And that in due time, what they did to Washington, D.C. will happen to all population centers across the planet. It appears that... So you noticed? Then you can keep watching us while you sleep. Six feet under! Jacob? Jacob? Jacob, please respond. Was that the president? Jacob! 
Are you still there, or have we just... York Hannah? Jerry? Something just happened here at the Pentagon. The President just used... Hell, I don't even know what to call that. But the President just used some sort of weapon and exterminated the intruders. He is holding the weapon at me right now. Mr. President, do you have any idea what, you mu what you've just done? Have you gone mad? We all have to go a little mad sometimes. Now tell your boy to tell you what will happen to any other force that tries to do this. Mr. President? Mr. President? Fuck. Son of a bitch. <coughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I apologize for the language. We need to take a break. This is TV2 and 99.5 WLOL. We'll be back shortly.
unknown how this disease is being spread. Due to uncertainty regarding methods of transmission at this time, all citizens hearing this message should consider this disease as airborne and transmitted by bodily fluids. If you are not infected, remain indoors and do not allow anyone else into your current location for any reason, as they could be infected with this contagion and could infect you and your family or those around you. This is the emergency notification system serving the Houston metropolitan area. If you are not currently located within the Houston metropolitan area and are hearing this message, please tune to a station providing news and emergency information for your location. The emergency notification system has been activated to keep the public informed of cases involving threats to public health. The following message has been transmitted at the request of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, the Texas Department of Public Health, and the Governor's Office. This is a public health emergency message for the following locations. In the United States, the entire state of Texas. Around five hours ago, an astronomical disaster took place in the skies above Houston, Texas, and has since led to the spread of an highly infectious and deadly contagion, whose origins remain unknown at this time. However, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has retrieved a sample at this time, which was procured from the wreckage of the main debris site, located near Astro World Theme Park. Since retrieving this sample, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention can now report that this unknown disease is far more dangerous than had been previously believed. In a study of 50 persons infected with this contagion, which has now been classified as Napalmania 22-8, additional, far more serious symptoms have been discovered. The new list of symptoms include, but are not limited to, profuse bleeding from the nose and mouth, loss of consciousness, leading to coma, uncontrollable and impulsive body movements, loss of smell, taste, and touch, and complete paralysis from the neck down. At this time, it has also been determined that this disease is in fact transmitted via bodily fluids and airborne. Medical centers around the state have now reported a massive influx of patients displaying symptoms of Napalmania 22-8 and hospitals are reaching capacity at this time, meaning that it will be unlikely that all persons who are infected with Napalmania 22-8 will be able to be treated in a timely manner. Due to the severity of this virus's spread, the following actions will be immediately taken in order to prevent further spread of this disease and to protect life of all Texans. As of this emergency notification's conclusion, the borders leading both in and out of the state of Texas will be sealed until further notice, and no one will be allowed to leave or enter the state until further advised. In addition, a mandatory shelter-in-place order will also take effect following the conclusion of this message, and all Texans, with the exception of medical emergencies, will be granted permission to leave their homes or current locations until further notice. Additionally, should you be determined to be infected with Napalmania 22-8, regardless of the disease's severity or natural immunity, will be removed from their homes and taken to specialized medial facilities being set up by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the Federal Emergency Management Agency so that you can be properly treated and so further information regarding this disease's true nature can be discovered and discerned to the public. While this disease is currently performantly non-fatal, with the exception of those extremely young and extremely old, this disease is evolving rapidly and could mutate at any time, as new symptoms and effects on the human body are being discovered every hour. Finally, martial law will be imposed throughout the state of Texas within the following hour, per order of the governor of the state of Texas. During this period of martial law, all rights contained within the Texas and United States constitutions will be considered null and void, and anyone seen outside, except in the case of medical emergencies, will be arrested on site and may be possibly apprehended by force should citizens decide to ignore this implementation of martial law. Martial law has been implemented for the purpose of further enforcing the soon-to-be-in-effect shelter-in-place order. At this time, the approximate number of those infected with Napalmania 22-8 is unknown, but is believed to be in the hundreds of thousands. Again, do not allow any persons inside of your home at this time, with the exception of military or government authorities or law enforcement officials. Please remain tuned to remain informed of the latest developments on this statewide public health emergency. This is the emergency notification system serving the Austin metropolitan area. 
If you are hearing this message and are not currently within the Austin metropolitan area, immediately tune to a station providing news and emergency information for your local area. Do not use the telephone. Telephone lines are to be kept open for government use only. The emergency notification system has been activated. This message will repeat. Please stand by. We interrupt regularly scheduled programming. This is the emergency notification system with an urgent message from the Texas National Guard, the United States Army, and the governor of the state of Texas. This is a law enforcement warning for the entire state of Texas. Around five minutes ago, multiple medical and military authorities have reported that the citizens whom were infected and comatose with Napalmania 22-8 have awoken from their comas. Immediately after awakening, these infected persons were noted as wanting to immediately return to their homes. Upon being informed that military and civil authorities could not comply with their requests, these individuals began to attack innocent medical personnel from the CDC and Texas Departments of Public Health and left the United States military, along with an unknown branch of the Texas National Guard, to open fire upon the aggressors in an attempt to end the threat to the innocent. However, their attempts have catastrophically failed. The infected individuals, even after being shot as many as 90 times, refused to stand down and have reportedly attacked military and civil authorities in great numbers, with eyewitnesses stating that the infected have partaken in actions of cannibalism and murder. Most disturbingly of all, after one infected individual who had been shot but had not partaken in illicit activities against authorities, was left with a massive hole near the lungs, and within moments, other infected nearby converged on this individual and began to devour them whole. At this time it has been determined that one officer who attempted to intervene and stop the attack was ripped in half by a group of infected and is believed to be deceased at this time. Due to the brutal actions of the infected and a seemingly blatant disregard to all acts of humanity, the governor and civil authorities have issued this law enforcement warning, as it has been determined that further attacks against defenseless members of the general public are highly probable at this time and that further deaths of the innocent may occur should those whom are infected with Napalmania 22-8 return to their residences and come into contact with uninfected individuals, with it being believed these infected have only one directive at this time, that being committing acts of cannibalism and murder. At this time, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, in coordination with the governor's office, have ordered the immediate and complete mobilization of the Texas National Guard at this time, in addition to, after careful consideration between the governor and the President of the United States, mobilizing members of the United States Marines and Space Force in order to further repel the infected and to purify the state of this infection. At this time, the governor of the state of Texas, along with the United States government, have authorized the soon-to-be-deployed regiments of the Texas National Guard and the United States Marines to use lethal force against any persons whom are on the streets and are being ordered to shoot on sight, with no verbal warning or attempts at identification required. This means that all citizens whom are on the streets at this time, who have not already heeded the shelter-in-place and martial law impositions in the past eight hours of their implementation, should return home at once, as if they are spotted on the streets, they will be shot and killed with no questions asked. This is not a dramatization. I repeat, this is not a dramatization. Do not allow anyone to enter your home. If you are infected with Napalmania 22-8, it is being asked that you immediately isolate yourself from others and should you see an opportunity once military officials arrive in your area to leave your home and allow yourself to be purged of the contagion to protect your family, friends, and country. Do not allow yourself to engage in acts of cannibalism against your friends and family. It is better to have died before you can kill others. The CDC has added vampirism to the list of symptoms at this time and have elevated Napalmania's risk to the survival of the human race from moderate to catastrophic. Infected individuals have also been noticed being attracted to sound and heavy vibrations and have already begun to attack cellular towers and broadcasting stations in extreme numbers. At this time, please lower the auditory transmission levels from your current listening or viewing device to as low as possible while still allowing for you to hear the emergency notification system. 
This situation is expected to begin spilling out of the state and into surrounding states at any moment, as it is believed the number of infected persons now exceeds 10 million. If you have any firearms or other weaponry in your possession, please ready or load them and be prepared to defend your life and your property should an infected individual attempt to breach your location and attack you and your family. The United States Marines and an unknown branch of the United States military will be going door to door in major population centers throughout the southern United States and attempting to evacuate uninfected persons to locations outside of the state to prevent further infections and loss of life. These emergency operations will begin to take place in approximately one hour's time. Do not open your door for anyone other than members of the United States military who will shine an ultraviolet light through your windows in order to discern that they are not infected. Finally, obey the martial law imposition. If you do not do so, you will be killed by the United States military with no verbal warning or chance to identify yourself. This is the emergency notification system. Please stay tuned for further updates on this catastrophic and evolving situation. interrupt all regularly scheduled programming at the request of the governor of Oklahoma and the United States government. This is a statewide emergency. This is an emergency action notification. This is not a test. I repeat, this is not a test. Approximately 15 minutes ago, individuals showing symptoms of Napalmania 22-8, a highly infectious disease, which leads those infected to become mindless zombies, have been reported as being present in patients whom have arrived at medical facilities throughout the state of Oklahoma. Locations most heavily impacted include the following cities and counties. Oklahoma City, located in Oklahoma County. Tulsa, located in Tulsa County. Stillwater, located in Payne County and Norman, located in Cleveland County. At this time, at this time, it is believed that patients have either been infected by individuals who have somehow broken the Texan quarantine, which has now been in effect for over four days, or are individuals who have in fact crossed into the state of Oklahoma from Texas and were already infected. Those who are infected have already begun to partake in acts of extreme cannibalism and in addition, have caused a massive influx of cases in persons who were previously uninfected. However, at this time it has been determined by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention that the following actions can be taken in order to fully eliminate these persons should they attack you or your family. Firstly, should infected be roaming the streets in a pack, otherwise referred to as a horde, you can cause a distraction and escape if you successfully wound one or more members of the horde or pack, as other members of the group will begin to cannibalize the wounded members of their horde or pack. It has been noted that by doing this, you buy yourself and your family ample time to escape the area, as infected will not cease their acts of cannibalism until the entire corpse has been consumed, leaving no trace of the wounded. Depending on the size of the individual and the size of the pack, this can buy your and your family anywhere between 10 and 15 minutes. During this period, it has also been determined that there is increased aggression should you attempt to break up their acts of cannibalism. There is an 85% chance that you will become their next meal, regardless of whether you are wounded or not. Finally, if there is a lone infected individual, a carefully positioned shot to the eye or eyes will cause the infected to attempt to consume itself, with a 99% rate of success in doing so. The best form of elimination is to simply injure an infected slightly and allow the infected person to kill themselves. If these individuals are able to bite you, will transmit the disease to you, and should this occur, self-termination is the only method of ensuring that you will not have a chance to attack loved ones and your fellow Oklahomans. However, if a person is completely consumed by the infected or the head is completely consumed, that person will not return to life and become one of them. Remember, dead in the head means no undead. Governor Greg Abbott has issued an executive order, which will take effect at the conclusion of this message. That order will see the borders leading in and out of the state sealed until further notice and will not be open to anyone, even military or government authorities. The United States Air Force has also warned that nuclear sterilization strikes may become needed should this disease continue to spread exponentially within the coming hours. Sterilization strikes have not been ordered at this time however, and there is no need to worry about nuclear strikes taking place anytime soon. 
Finally, if you cannot eliminate an infected individual, you can evade their wrath by remaining completely silent, with the exception of breathing, and by ceasing all unnecessary movement. Immediately turn off all devices which can cause exceptionally loud noises, and if you can, seek a basement or underground area, and seal off all openings to the outside world, and attempt to create a noise isolation area in your home. If you are able to establish a noise isolation area, you will be able to, within reason, continue to listen to devices or speak at normal levels. This is an extremely deadly situation. Do not go outside. You will be in catastrophic danger. Stay tuned to this station for further information on this deadly situation. Please stand by for a message from an unknown sender. Good evening. My name is Madison Williamson, and I represent the United States Contagion Containment Corps, and I would like to formally apologize on behalf of my organization for not being able to properly neutralize the threat of Napalmania 22-8, and for being unable to contain this contagion sooner. The Contagion Containment Corps was established in the wake of deadly viruses, such as the swine flu, Ebola, mad cow disease, and polio. We are tasked with, should such a situation present itself, entering areas experiencing high levels of infection of highly contagious and deadly illnesses, and protecting medical officials and uninfected citizens, to maintain a reasonable level of normalcy, and to ensure that no diseases ever cripple this nation, or threaten the continued stabilization of the government. At this time however, we promise you that no such situation has taken place, or is imminent. However, we would like to speak with you about the nature of this disease, which we have concluded upon with help from our colleagues at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. Napalmania 22-8 is a disease that since its initial appearance in Houston nearly four days ago, has baffled us in regards to what this disease truly is. That was however, because we were treating this as a simple disease or virus. But we can now tell you all, that Napalmania 22-8 is anything but a typical disease. Napalmania 22-8 is not in fact a disease or virus at all. This is something entirely new. Something not even close to being referred to as a disease. This plague is being caused by a parasite. Upon inhalation or injection of the parasite into the human body, a fascinating, yet horrifying change immediately begins to take shape within the human body itself. This parasite begins to latch onto blood cells, and consumes any remnants of HGH, or human growth hormones and begins to create something entirely new, and entirely horrifying. These individuals, in other words, are no longer worthy of being called human. We have classified those who have completely been robbed of HGH as demi-humans. The way that a demi-human survives is as much both completely and utterly fascinating, as it is completely and utterly horrifying. These individuals can only maintain their genetic structure if they completely and utterly consume the human growth hormones and flesh of human beings. Us here at the Contagion Containment Corps would like to ensure you all that everything is being done, that is within our power, to limit the further spread of this parasitic abomination, but this is something that has never before taken place in the course of all recorded history. It is something that the government of the United States believes, if we are unsuccessful in quelling the spread of the demi-human parasitic infection, may lead to the complete extinction of the human race, as well as all other living, breathing beings on this planet. In a unanimous decision from the Senate and the House of Representatives, in a joint session which has just taken place, a landmark decision has been made. This decision, which will be put into effect at once, is that the United States Contagion Containment Corps immediately take complete control of day-to-day -day life in the states of Texas and Oklahoma to us. Do not worry. We do not wish to roam the street as brutal enforcers of the law and containment, and only want to help protect this state, all of its cities, and the nation as a whole. In times like these, the last thing we need as a people, as a society, as a species, is division. However, we must divide ourselves from others, if we hope to have even a small chance of quelling the spread of this parasite. 
we have come to the conclusion that, while extreme, the best and seemingly only course of action to take in this situation is to initiate full-scale evacuations of all uninfected persons from the south-central United States, including the states of Texas and Oklahoma, and not only Texas and Oklahoma, but from all uninfected states as well, and move the population, for the time being, to northern parts of Canada and certain areas of South America. We have authorized the mandatory evacuation of the United States for those whom are uninfected, effective immediately, and we implore you in these trying times, to have faith in humanity, have faith in the nation, have faith in yourselves, and most importantly, to have faith in the United States Contagion Containment Corps. Further information will be transmitted tomorrow morning at approximately 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, across all broadcast and cable systems, in all uninfected states of the United States, as well as the state of Oklahoma. Please, stay safe until then. This message will now conclude. Goodbye for now. Good morning once again. This message is being transmitted to all broadcast and cable systems nationwide, and these are specialized instructions for you all to follow, in order to get you to safety, safely. First of all, since our last address to you all, some startling information has become clear. It was previously thought that much like science fiction, those infected and turned into demi-humans would be nothing more than carriers or mindless vessels for the parasite's wishes. But it has now come to our attention that this is far from the truth. It turns out that all those who are infected retain all of their memories and even have a slightly heightened level of intellect. For this reason, please put on headphones or other noise isolating auditory transmission devices on in order to prevent infected persons from hearing these instructions, as if you do not follow this advice, everyone may be endangered and many of you will not survive. We would now like to transmit information for your local area. Those instructions will be transmitted in 5 seconds. Please stand by. For the following locality, Oklahoma City. At 8 a.m. local time this morning, the United States Contagion Containment Corps will be utilizing specialized aircraft which limit noise to evacuate uninfected citizens from Oklahoma City every 15 minutes in a variety of locations. If you are in Oklahoma City or the surrounding suburbs, the following locations have been designated as evacuation hubs where all evacuations will emanate from. These locations will be guarded by specialized units of the United States Navy and will be located in the following areas. If you are located in northern Oklahoma City or are closest to northern Oklahoma City and are uninfected, quickly but quietly proceed to the four designated evacuation centers for this part of the city. Wise Grove Farms. Wiley Post Airport the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum, or Forest Park. Please continue listening for information on when it will be safe for you to begin your journey to one of these evacuation hubs, should you be in or live closest northern portions of the city. Furthermore, if you are located in southern Oklahoma City or are closest to southern Oklahoma City and are uninfected, quickly but quietly proceed to one of the eight designated evacuation centers for this part of the city. The Hobby Lobby Convention Center. Will Rogers World Airport. John W. Nichols Scout Ranch, South Lakes Park, the Museum of Osteology, Trossberg Golf Course, Tinker Golf Course, or Retreat Park. If you and your family will be evacuating, do so when you notice the following actions begin to take place. The United States Marines in conjunction with the United States Contagion Containment Corps will be carrying out a coordinated distraction in outlying areas of the city at approximately 8 a.m. local time this morning. When it is time to evacuate, fireworks displays and loud, obnoxious music will begin to be used at the following locations, which if you are within a three-block radius of, should not evacuate from your home or current location for at least 15 minutes after the commencement of operation, party in the USA Quail Creek Country and Golf Club, Quail Springs Mall, Frontier City Amusement Park, the Oklahoma City Zoo, Loud Lakes Haunted Forest, the University of Oklahoma Medical Center, State Fair Park, and Stitchcomb Wildlife Refuge. The loud noises should allow you ample time to evacuate the area, and these distractions will continue for a period of 28 continuous hours. 
At the conclusion of Operation Party in the USA, the United States Contagion Containment Corps, regardless of how many persons have been successfully evacuated, will be initiating nuclear strikes in the Oklahoma City area for three continuous hours in an attempt to neutralize all remaining demi-humans. If you are unable to evacuate, make your way to your nearest protectorate bunker or fallout shelter and remain there until you are cleared to leave. These locations will be guarded by members of the United States Contagion Containment Corps as well. Following the initiation of Operation Party in the USA, the United States Marines and the United States Contagion Containment Corps will also be roaming the streets in specialized low-noise vehicles equipped with ultraviolet lighting in order to assist in evacuations. However, if your area is experiencing a high concentration of demi-humans, your area may not be reached by these patrols, and you should be prepared to embark to a safe location or evacuation hub on foot. Take advantage of the party. This message will repeat every five minutes until the commencement of Operation Party in the USA. Once you have decided which evacuation hub you wish to navigate to, turn off all auditory devices in order to limit the chances of infected becoming aware of the party. which marks the 10th straight day that BP has gone up five or more points. Unfortunately, though, for those of you with stocks in Elon Musk's Tesla stock went down over 25 points today. This is due to an NCC news story which exposed the unsafe and inhumane working conditions that everyday working Joes have had to suffer through at Tesla assembly plants. And, speaking of points, the New York Knicks defeated the Milwaukee Bucks by over 40 points in last night's game with the final score being New York 104, Milwaukee 56. This comes due to almost the entire Bucks starting lineup being out with either injuries or cases of the flu, so I guess we will not have to fear the deer anytime soon. We're going to take a break here on 1020 WNKX and NY Choice, but stay tuned for the rest of the show as our interview with Mrs. Mayer is one you will not want to miss. We'll be right back. Do you love your country? Of course you do. Do you want to serve your country instead of sitting on your ass every day? Obviously. Then do I have an offer for you? The U.S. Army. The U.S. Army is the first line of defense against foreign boogeymen and boogie women and serves the United States day in and day out. Want to play video games? No, you do not. You want to climb some damn ropes and... Give me a hundred. Interested in a relationship and starting a family? Preposterous. You just want to serve Uncle Sam and grovel at the feet of the president. So, so, what are you waiting for? Really, do I need to come over to your house and teach you a lesson, you dumb son of a... <laughs> There's a pack of wild dogs blocking the door. What are we gonna do? Well, it's just dogs. I mean, look, there's a cute poodle over there looking like it just wants a treat. And over there, it's the dog VTuber asking for bits on Twitch. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Oh, God, they're biting me! 
Aries, get over here and help me. They're killing me. Seriously, why are you not helping me fend off these dogs? How could I have ever avoided such a painful fate? Yes, how could this man have ever protected himself against this pack of wild dogs? In the United States, over 100,000 Americans are attacked by roving packs of wild dogs each year. And for those in fear for their lives, there is only one way to know you will be covered fully. That is Wolf Pack Insurance. For over 50 years, we have protected Americans against the deadliest creatures on American soil, wild dogs. And with Wolf Pack on your side, recovery is just a walk in the park. So, visit your local Wolf Pack Insurance agent and get Wolf Pack Insurance today. Wolf Pack Insurance, when you need help, make sure you have got the pack. And we are once again back here in the driver's seat. Next, we want to bring you a story that, to our knowledge, no other news program nor network would dare bring to you. The American people. We bring you an inside story from the streets of Houston. Or, more specifically, someone who made it out of those cold, cold streets nearly a year ago. After what we have all come to know as Impact X. With more on this story, we bring you to my main man, Jason Dixon, with more on this incredible tale. Thank you, Dale. And today, we bring to you what, for all intents and purposes, is a story that not even the government themselves have tried to tell the world. We bring you the story of what really happened on that fateful day. And to our surprise, the days, weeks, and months that came afterwards. Where were you on that fateful day? The day that we all bore witness to the deadly impact of heroic astronaut Charles Prescott's rocket into Houston, bringing down with him what many have since called the first impact. Why do they call it the first impact? Because immediately as we saw on that day the rocket crash into the ground, all broadcast coming out of the city of Houston, and within hours the entire state of Texas would cease, leaving us all in the dark, and later to mourn the losses of the Lone Star State. But is that the true story? Recently, us here on the driver's seat received a letter from one Mary Hartman, who is, to this day, claiming to be the only known survivor of that day, and from what she told us, the next six months of her life. Mary Hartman was born in the city of Houston in 1962, and had never left the city to live elsewhere. And from what we learned, neither would her late husband, Charles Hartman. But unlike Charles Prescott, Mr. Hartman was not given the gift of painless and swift death. Mary Hartman told us that there is a much more dangerous situation which began to play out right in front of their eyes. Thank you, Jason. And we are back here on NY Choice. My name is Dale Williams, and this is The Driver's Seat. We're going to shift from our original game plan for this next segment, as our guest has asked us to, and who are we to complain? We get to give all you hard workers out there the word straight out of the proverbial overlord's mouth as we welcome the mayor of New York, the Honorable Teresa Jacobson. Teresa, welcome to the driver's seat. And from the sounds of it, you have something that makes you want to put the pedal to the metal. That's right, Dale. And before I get to it, I just want to say that I hope little Caitlin makes a full recovery after that incident playing dodgeball the other day. I mean, from what I saw, she took one hell of an impact. And once again, thank you for having me here on the driver's seat, as I'm a big fan of the show and yourself, Dale. Oh, thank you for the concern, Teresa. And I know that good old Heidi Williams, for those of you who live under a rock, as my wife, has a smile on her face right now hearing that. But enough about me and my kids. Let us get to what you have to say to all your kids, the citizens of the great metropolis we call home. Take it away, Teresa. I will, Dale. But instead of speaking to you, I want your viewers and listeners in New York and around the country to have a chat with me right here and right now. My fellow New Yorkers and at large my fellow Americans, I have never been very good at keeping calm when faced with a dangerous crisis that has or is about to befall our great city, but today... I must inform you of a crisis in which I was just alerted to via a phone call with our Honorable President Wilkerson. Around an hour ago, the President was alerted by NASA and the European Space Agency that at this time, 
it appears hundreds of meteors have been detected and are on course for our planet. Hold up, Teresa. Are you, are you kidding me? Hundreds of meteors on course for Earth? Tell me this is some out-of-season April Fool's joke, Madam Mayor. Sadly, I am not, Dale. These meteors were located less than 25 minutes ago and appeared just a small distance away from our moon. And at this time, it will impact the planet within the next half hour. And according to reports by NASA, some of these meteors range in size from the size of a Tesla Cybertruck to the size of Rhode Island. From what I have heard, that would seem quite accurate. Currently, one point of impact will be New York City. And, as you all know, this is something that will not only impact us, New Yorkers, but will impact all of mankind. Wait a minute, you're telling me you were just informed of the existence of these meteors, yet they're only half an hour away from impacting Earth? How is that possible? What? Are these damn things moving at the speed of light? My god. Thank you for telling us, but I need to ask a very important question. Not too long ago, we experienced another impact with our planet, but from a spaceship, not a meteor. Do you have any clue about if this could be like the Impact X phenomenon, which took place in Houston almost two years ago? Well, Dale, I can confirm that NASA sees no chance that this is anything like the Impact X phenomenon, which left the entire state of Texas in ruin and rendered it uninhabitable nearly a year ago. All I can say is that the residents of New York and the surrounding areas need to immediately seek shelter deep underground. Currently, under the Houston Act of 2022, I am opening all underground protectorate bunkers to the public and am advising that all citizens hearing this message seek out their sector's protectorate and prepare to embark on a journey with your fellow New Yorkers. At this time, I would like to let everyone know that there is no indication that this meteor will destroy the city or that it will be overly dangerous in the long term. However, a meteor impact or any impacts from objects coming from the great beyond, as all of humanity bore witness to in 2020, can be disastrous. In addition, I have a very important message to all of you. To prevent any harm to you all, we are asking that you listen to the protectorate leaders in your assigned protectorate and prepare for a lengthy stay. At this time, I would like to wish you all good luck and good night. All right, folks, that was the Mayor Teresa Jacobson on the ongoing phenomena that is about to impact our listening area, most likely. During that conversation, us here in the driver's seat went over all the relevant files we have on spatial objects, and we can assume that since these objects are moving at such a high rate of speed, these objects may in fact not be meteors at all, but what a Harvard NASA study labeled runaway planets. These are the most high-speed objects in the known universe, and in said study, were estimated to have a speed of over 30 million miles per hour. While we cannot confirm that these are runaway planets, which have somehow aligned on a direct course for Earth, it is something that we here in the driver's seat believe could explain how these objects have miraculously appeared with no warning or even any prior discovery. We are receiving more news of it at this time, so we're going to take a quick commercial break. This is the driver's seat. We'll be right back. In a galaxy not so far away, where coffee has become overdone and overrun by mediocrity. One captain is on a journey to make coffee great once again. That captain is me. Hello, and I'm Captain Neo, and at SBB Coffee & Co, we aim to send your taste buds on an intergalactic journey to the tastiest coffee in the galaxy. Using our pads and star beams, we give our passengers a first class ticket to deliciousness. No longer is coffee dark as the black hole surrounding the coffee industry, but it as bright as a supernova. Come and stop by SBB Enterprise and its several space stations and embark on a journey your taste buds will never forget. Or order our patented Star Bean Coffee Mix online today at svbcoffee.com. That's svbcoffee.com. Are you ready for the adventure of a lifetime? We interrupt regularly scheduled programming at the request of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration and the United States government. This is a global emergency. 
Important information will follow. This is an emergency action notification issued at the request of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration and the United States government. This is not a test. I say again, this is not a test. Approximately one hour ago, astronomers from around the globe detected the presence of over 250 spatial objects on a direct approach with our planet. It is currently unknown how these objects evaded detection upon entering our solar system, but the following information can currently be disclosed to the general public. At this time, while all impact points cannot be determined, the following impacts will occur within the next 5 to 10 minutes. In the United States. New York City, New York. Boston, Massachusetts. Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Chicago, Illinois. Jacksonville, Florida. Washington, D.C. Along with hundreds of other locations worldwide. At this time, due to the high rate of speed these objects are moving towards the Earth, NASA in conjunction with the European Space Agency have determined that these are in fact runaway planets. Runaway planets are hypothetical planets not bound to any star that have been propelled outward through the space of our Milky Way by an encounter with the galaxy's giant central black hole. Until today, no planet like this has ever been found, but it is estimated that these objects are currently moving at a rate of 30 million miles per hour. Depending on the exact size of the runaway planets and the exact points of impact with our planet, extreme to apocalyptic damage will be dealt to all areas in the immediate area of impact. At this time, while the currently known runaway planets have been determined not to be possible of triggering a Kessler syndrome or extinction scale event, extreme devastation to each impact point is expected. Due to this and the low likelihood of full evacuations being feasible at this moment, the governor of New York, in conjunction with the president, are asking all citizens to attempt to reach the lowest part of your home or current locale. If you are able to reach one within the next five minutes, you may also seek shelter in a designated protectorate bunker in your area. At this time, the runaway planet on course for the New York City area has been identified to be five football fields in length and ten football fields in height. Due to this, it is expected that those who do not seek safe haven immediately within three miles of New York City will face certain death, depending on the impact location. At this time, please seek shelter in your current location, or if possible, in the nearest protectorate bunker in your immediate vicinity. Please take a battery-powered radio or television to your place of safe harbor or protectorate bunker, along with any other necessary medicinal products, and at least 14 days' worth of food and bottled water. Following the conclusion of this alert, only news programming will be permitted, per the Houston Accords of 2020, and any cable or broadcast provider whom does not comply will face permanent withdrawal of all broadcasting licenses. This station has been designated as a primary news outlet for the New York City area. Please stay tuned to this station for future emergency notification system alerts pertaining to your local area. This is the emergency notification system serving the New York City area. If you are not in this area, please tune to a broadcasting provider serving your local area. We now return you to live news coverage on the driver's seat. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now approaching 6.30 p.m., which is time we have been informed that NASA believes one of the meteors will strike the city of New York. At this time, we have a reporter from one of our affiliate stations. And I am being told that we are going to show a report from KNX. All right, folks, we now take you to the Hudson and KNX 26 reporter, Caitlin Osterman. All residents receiving this civil danger warning message should be prepared to follow the coming news and instructions. 
Please stand by. The following message is being transmitted by order of the Governor of the State of New York, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, and the Department of Homeland Security. Around one minute ago, NASA made a shocking revelation regarding the origins of the objects which have now made direct impact on our planet. Following review of the signals which have been emitted from these objects, it has now been determined that these objects are directly on course for the planet from TRAPPIST-1, also known as the homeworld of the Retlands. It has been determined by the Council that these impacts are a retaliation for last year's astronomical mission in Houston, Texas. The Council has made contact with the only known descendant of Yakana Naruji, a Retlan emissary who disappeared after the second impact in 1958. The son of Yakana Naruji, now identified as K, has been determined to have been abducted by the heir apparent of the Retlan government, who has been designated as Zomeno. The Council has now issued this civil danger warning, as it is believed that the followers of Omeno, who was directly involved in the second impact of 1958, as Omeno was the individual whom sent Retlin terrorists into the Pentagon, have been transported directly onto the planet via these objects. These objects have not been determined to have released any Retlin troops as of yet, but it has been confirmed that heavy amounts of black snow have been falling within a 15-mile radius of New York City. Black Snow is a biological weapon developed by the Retlin military in order to commit acts of genocide against undesignated individuals. Black Snow has the ability to completely dissolve anything it comes in contact with, including but not limited to, methods of transportation such as planes, trains, and automobiles, residences and establishments such as homes and shopping centers, and living beings, including humans and animals of earthly origin. At this time, all citizens hearing this message are to immediately seek shelter in designated protectorate bunkers, and are to remain in these bunkers at all times. Not doing so will result in certain death. Updates will be transmitted as they become available. This is the emergency notification system. All broadcast and cable systems shall transmit this message. This is NY Choice. All regular programming has been terminated. Please stand by for further updates. The emergency notification system has been activated. Do not use the telephone. Telephone lines are to be kept open for government use only. Extreme snowfall is currently occurring in New York City and the surrounding area. Approximately one hour ago, a planetary impact event took place, with a large portion of this event striking the Hudson River. Within the last half hour, a heavy storm system has developed over New York City in areas within a four-mile radius of the city, and extreme snowfall has been occurring. Visibility levels have been restricted to less than a quarter mile and in areas closest to the Hudson River, visibility has been restricted to less than a tenth mile. Early estimates state that snow accumulations will range from two to five inches per hour. A blizzard warning is issued for winter storms with sustained or frequent winds of 35 miles per hour or higher with considerable falling snow which frequently reduces visibility to one quarter of a mile or less. These conditions are currently expected to prevail for a minimum of eight hours. We have just received a message from the governor's office. The governor's office is urging all citizens to go to the lowest part of their home, shelter, or dwelling at this time. Please ensure you take a battery-powered radio or television with you in the event of a power outage. The governor has also stated that similar storms are taking place in regions directly impacted by the earlier planetary impact and that these snowstorms are causing unprecedented damage to areas impacted by them. Damage has been reported in Alaska, Minnesota, Wisconsin, Michigan, Iowa, Florida, California, and in London, Paris, Berlin, Moscow, and Tokyo outside the United States. The Council is currently investigating the origin of these storms, but they are also asking citizens to seek shelter at once. Please stay tuned to this station for all further news and emergency updates. The National Weather Service in Norman, Oklahoma has reported the presence of a massive meteorological disturbance emanating from the eastern seaboard of the United States. It appears that the storm systems which were generating heavy snowfall have expanded exponentially, 
and that the snowfall amounts have increased drastically over the past four hours, and additionally the Department of Energy has reported that most of the eastern seaboard is now without power. FEMA has reported mass devastation in the areas directly impacted by these black snowstorms, as the National Weather Service, in footage received from affected areas shows that the coloration of snowfall which has been occurring from these meteorological disturbances has been black, instead of white snow, as is expected. It appears that something far more dangerous is going on at this. Please stand by for a message from an unknown sender. have reached the voicemail box of Yokana Miwugi. The subscriber you have dialed is not in service. If you feel you've received this message in error, please hang up and try your call again later. Message OH16356. Voicemail box of Yokana Nirugi. We're sorry, your call cannot be completed as dialed. Please check the number and try again. have reached the voicemail box of your kind energy find my son he should be a young adult by now i named him Kay. i hope he knows i love him unfortunately the council didn't let me live amongst you long enough to see you grow up into a man like i wish i could have in the midst of what must be done i have sent someone to protect you k go to tokyo you will find respite there. Please forgive me for what must be done. Connection terminated. Do me all that.